Hello, everybody. Can anybody hear me, please? If you can hear me, please say yes, I can hear you. So I Hello, know. Everybody. Thank you. Okay, I can see myself everybody even on my own phone. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I, if you are on the call already, uh, I wanted to, to type on the chat on the message area connect innovate grow say connect innovate grow you know whenever i say sm first you're going to be saying connect innovate and grow come on if you can hear me clearly i wanted to say connect innovate and grow type it separately type one connect then next you say innovate then the next you say grow let's see you say that and i'll be sure you're hearing me if you don't if you didn't type that it simply means you can't hear me. Mr. Chibuza, I can see your chat. Oh, Ifuoma, you are there. Oh, my God. Good, good, good. Good, good. That is the first assignment to have to do today. Thank you for showing up on the Grow with SM First program tonight. Thank you so much, everyone, for showing up. Yeah, so the next thing you're going to do is to copy this link and send it across to all of your friends. Put it on Facebook. Say we are live now. Put it on your WhatsApp groups. Share it. Tell people that they are going to receive massive value tonight because we are here to. We are um, here tonight to map out uh, the next uh, year, the next year, the next few years. You know, come on. Let the message continue to come. Say connect, innovate, and go. Then, if you don't mind, I wanted to share this link of this live session across the different platforms where you belong on whatsapp on facebook on instagram anywhere at all you can send it out to come on do that right away thank you everyone okay and uh, when you do that you have yet another assignment before we kick start you're gonna tell me where you are watching from you're gonna tell me where you are watching from. So if you tell me where you're watching from, I will bring you to the stage. You see, I'll bring your comment to this live session. Okay, so somebody said, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, okay, I can see. Charles can say, good evening, sir, good evening. I can see a lot of you. So tell us where you're watching from. Okay, Oweri is on the lead. Can see Oweri. That's the Kachipolin. Okay. To tell you how far we've come, uh, Mulando, Mulando Daniel is watching from Kampala, Uganda. We have um, Chinonsu from Lagos. Everywhere. Um, Benson from Calabar. So come on, tell us where you're watching from. Then get your friends to be on this call with us. Favor is watching from Anambra. Okay, Anambra is coming up. We have Priska from Oka, Anambra. Weary. I have a lot of people from here. Okay, someone is calling, is watching from Aba. Correct. This person told us exactly where he is watching. She came out and is watching from Amako here, Oweri. Okay. A lot of people watching from Oweri. I think Oweri has the lead tonight, yeah? So, okay, thank you. Tell us where you're watching from, then we can begin this. Ibarium Campus. Where is Ibarium Campus? Someone is watching from Ibarium Campus. That should be Anambra, yeah? Okay. A lot of people coming, watching from Anambra, watching from um, Uwiri, Aba. We've got someone from Kampala, Uganda. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Peace from Uwiri. See uh, Wisdom Smart from Omar here. So tonight, we are looking at digital skills for the future. Digital skills for the future. And uh, our guest tonight is uh, Mr. John Obidi. Yeah, so uh, we are currently waiting for him to be with us. Keep telling us where you're watching from, and don't forget to send out this, um, share this link 
across to all your social media platforms, send it across to different WhatsApp groups. One of the things that you can do for your friends is to give them updates. And there is no better update than the update that has to do with knowledge sharing, you know. So please do that. I like the way this person describes her city. She said, she, I am watching from the beautiful city of Oweri. Amazing. Amazing. Chinedu is watching from Abba. Okay. Uh, uh, Oweri, the new tech hub of Africa. I believe you strongly. <laughs> okay, we'll have someone from Edo. Yeah, Okadike is watching from Edo. All right, so we've got a lot of people watching from different parts of Nigeria and outside Nigeria. So we have uh, Danok from Uyo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So please, guys, go ahead, share the link, connect, let people come on board through your link. Okay, we even got someone watching from Abakaliki. Amazing, Peter. Welcome, Benin City. So I want to I want to be sure people um, every part of the country is, is presented on this call. So we've got people watching from different locations. So Emeka Christian is watching from Lagos. Okay. <laughs> so and um, this is good. And the more you share this link, the more persons who are going to have been, we're going to be having join us on the call. So. Uh, in the shortest uh, possible time, our guest to be with us, and uh, we will go deep into the conversations for tonight. Okay, Mr. Charles is watching from Enugu. Okay, Tubechuku from Benin. I've got Anicha. So I think we have a lot of. I think Nigeria has been well represented on this call tonight. So, uh, I want us to, okay. Okay, so our guest um, is, uh, is already available. He said, we should give him just a short time. He will be on this call. So before he comes, I will be sharing with us uh, a few things that, uh, a few um, skills, a few things you should prepare for as we uh, get into a new phase, a new phase in our lives, yeah? Because the world has gone digital, AI is taking over. Uh, recently, I uh, decided to learn a skill in AI and it's called uh, prompt engineering. I just started the, 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 you can write it down. It's something you can learn. And very soon, as I said, AI will not take your job. AI will not take your job. Those who know how to manipulate AI will take the jobs. So the best thing you can do for yourself is to begin on time to learn. I'm taking a course on prompt engineering. Okay, somebody is asking what is it? Okay, please, um, my guys over there, write it down, prompt engineering. So if you can, you can note it down as something to go and learn, yeah? So today we'll be, we'll be talking about digital skills for the future. Why did we choose um, that topic? We are choosing that. We have chosen that topic because we are looking at uh, uh, our community being able to train for today. It is said that those who train today will rent tomorrow. Yeah, those who train today will rent tomorrow. So if you begin now to begin to train yourself for tomorrow, you see what will be happening in your life. Opportunities will show up and you are ready for it. Opportunities will show up and you are ready for it. So tonight, I want us to note that we have um, Mr. John Obidi, who is uh, uh, just trying to fix up one or two things, then he will join us shortly. Okay? All right. So uh, we, we will. I want to share with us a few things that... Uh, I have also uh, uh, learned, and I will share with you guys, especially uh, as regards uh, YouTube skills for the future. So let me open up one of my uh, um, um, slides that I thought. So uh, when we talk about um, skills for the future, uh, I, I will share with you when John comes, he will actually go ahead to do more 
on this topic. But I want to give us a preface or something that you can um, hold on to while we wait for him. When we, when we talk about digital skills for the future, I, I tend to look at uh, people preparing for workplace because all of us must not be founders or um, uh, all of us must not be founders. That's what, I, that's what I mean. So many of us will be working somewhere. And if you're working somewhere, it simply means you might be leveraging uh, tech skills to do your job. Or you might be in a space where uh, tech is needed to get your job done. Like, there is not like you might be, you will be, because that is the future of work. That is the future of work. So uh, these are some of the skills I think you should begin to work on. You can take notes of them. Number one, I call it digital competence. I call it number one, digital competence. As simple as it sounds, it's not, it's not, it's not complex. So please, the guy at the end, please help me uh, note this down. You can write it down as well so you don't forget it. Digital competence, what do I mean? The small things you can do with digital devices, like um, sending emails, uh, scheduling Google Meet, Google Meeting, yeah? Some of us, well, once we hear that the meeting is online, if we are scared, you know? Uh, if we ask you now to um, prepare this meeting for us, it becomes a difficult thing. But very soon, work will be virtual. So digital competence is one thing that you have to learn. Those small things, those little things you can do as someone who understands how to leverage and use the computer system, uh, who can uh, um, possibly be able to uh, organize a meeting, it can help you in your workplace. Where your maybe your manager says, can we do this stuff? And because you know how to search Google, as simple as that, it can be a skill that will help you in the future. These two competence, very important. Number two is communication. If you ask how is, because I'm talking about the workplace skills you need for the future before we get into the digital skills. How do I mean? Very soon, communication will become even much more difficult. Why? Because you will see that your team members are no more in the office where you need to be with them to talk to them. Many of them will become uh, uh, virtual workers. You get my point. Like my team, we have about um, about thirty six in my team, yeah. But now, what thirty six of us are all working remotely, and that simply means that we have to meet virtually every time we have to meet. I you know what it takes to motivate someone who is at the other end that you cannot see them, right? And most of the time, when these meetings are ho um, when these meetings hold, uh, you you can't see any. Everybody, um, cameras are turned off, right? So it simply means you have to have powerful words. Like we're having this meeting now. That's what, that's what we're talking about. The meetings will now begin to go from physical to, to offline, online, yeah? So what does that mean? It simply means you have, to be, you have to have powerful words to be able to communicate your idea clearly so that people will understand what you're saying. You know, before, when you are in the office, you can say, hey, guy, carry this thing and place here. Take this one to this place. But now you have to communicate the same instruction clearly so that the person who is not seeing you will be able to um, carry on the idea that you are sending out, yeah? So I want you to know that communication will become one of the skills that you have to master. The next one is mental agility in the workspace. If you're working somewhere, mental agility is one thing that you need. Mental agility is one thing that you need. How do I how, how do I how do I explain that? In an age of information overload, where there is information everywhere, like different information coming out at the same time from uh, from point A, from point B, from point C, information coming out from, the, as in like, if you go to Facebook, you see information. If you go to YouTube, you see information. If you, like, okay, there is a, as you open your WhatsApp, your boss is sending you an information. As you just turn on Facebook, you're seeing a new kind of stuff. Information everywhere. Your capacity to be able to manage and distill those information and be able to make decisions from that is very important because in the digital age, information will scatter everywhere. 
it's already happening that sometimes they even know should you do you want to uh, write about politics that they are talking about or you now want to follow the trend that is happening or you want to focus on your office work a lot of things happening at the same time you know before you could uh, just go and buy a newspaper and uh, you know uh, browse the, um, look at the pages that you want you know that it is one newspaper but now while on facebook all the newspapers show up for you this is no this is not the this is not the only thing that's available for you right your friends are putting stuff you see if you go to linkedin people are telling you how they are um i'm, I'm happy to announce that you know all of, a lot of things happening at the same time so you have to have a, a mental agility to be able to combine this information all of these are happening in our, and again you still have work to deliver you still have jobs to do for your boss you still have jobs to do in your company so in the, you still have um uh, uh tax to deliver in your office yeah you still have people who are depending on you for for instruction so your capacity to manage and your capacity to be able to process a lot of information at the same time becomes an advantage in a digital age yeah so I said number one if you can if, if you can recall number one number number three drop it down in the comment section if you're learning something we're still waiting a bit for mr john he will join us shortly so the next um the next um skill you have to master for the future of work in this digital age is critical thinking it's critical thinking how do i explain this i, I explain this by saying you, you can you don't have to take things you don't have to take information at their face value. Somebody shows up to you and says, I can do this. Uh, or, or you 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 read the internet and you see information and because of, because of that, you just, oh my God, you make a decision with it. No, you have to learn to analyze things. Why? Because there will be a lot of things to, uh, to process. Yeah? A lot of people show up, especially let's say you are, you are a top manager in your company, Somebody should have and said, like, and they can do this job. You don't take that. You have to pass it through a filter and be sure that this person can do this job, yeah? So I'm saying you have to have the capacity to do critical thinking, critical analysis. Very, very important. It's a skill that you have to develop. And there are courses available to take and increase your capacity to think, to think critically. It is an important skill for the future of work very important then there is one i i i think you have to learn many of us here are gen z's yeah but there is a there is there is a skill you you need in the in the in, in the next few years if you're going to be sustainable in your works in your workplace that skill is gen z management managing gen z's if you notice uh in recent time gen z's are beginning to get jobs and the language of Gen Z is not the same with the language of some people who are older, yeah? So you want to know how Gen Z is, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I want to know how Gen Z is think and know how to manage them. It is Gen Z that tell you that they are, they are leaving this job because it, it, it stresses, uh, uh, how do they say it? Uh, because of their mental health, <laughs> you know? A Gen Z shows up at work and tomorrow they say, they are no more doing this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the job for my mental health, you know. Someone who was born in the 90, in the 80s wouldn't say that. They wouldn't just lose their job. So you have to know how to manage Gen Z's. Gen Z management is a skill that will help you. It will help you to channel their energies. Gen Z's have great energy, yeah? So you want to, you want to be able to learn how to work with Gen Z's. Why? Because there's going to be a shift in the workforce very soon. And if you're going to be a top manager, if you're going to lead in your organization, you're going to learn how to how Gen Z's think. You're going to learn how Gen Z's think, and there is a cause for that. I have I I, I, I was just taking the course because I want to know how Gen Z's think. Yeah, so it's very important you go out and look for that course if you want to grow in your workspace in the nearest future. Why? Because most of the guys who are bosses who are leading in different uh, areas of um, the workspace we will be shifting for the gen z's to take over so when gen z's come on board 
Someone who knows how to think will be at advantage, will be a better manager, will be someone who uh, will be able to lead them and organize them to get results. If you want agencies to get results, that is a way you have to pattern them. So that is a skill you need for the future. Is someone getting value in this? Uh, if you're getting value, please just put it on the comment section and say, this makes a lot of sense. Just say something about that. Say something about what you're learning in the comment section. And if you don't mind, come on, share this message across to your different uh, platforms. Use the share button, send it out. If you are getting value tonight, drop a message on the chat. Say, yes, I'm getting value. Drop an emoji. Say, this makes sense. I've learned something already. So please, I want you to do that if you have. So the next skill you have to get is a skill I call self-management. It's a skill I call self-management in your workspace. It's a skill I call self-management. How do I mean? In a digital age where most work will be remote, in a digital age where most work will be remote, you don't need someone to inspire you or motivate you. You have to be the one to motivate yourself to get the result that you need to get. In the digital age where you are working, somebody your, your, your company is in Germany and you're working in Nigeria, it simply means you have to be inspired enough. You have to, you have to, you have to motivate yourself to be able to get the result that you need. That's what it means. In a digital age where uh, a task is assigned as slack. Like normally before, you come to you, you you come to work. Your boss takes you to where, to, where um, takes you and shows you how to write the code, how to do the designs and all of that. What they want, everything is now on Slack. Everything is now on Trello. Everything now is is, is now on um on uh what's this one that we use in the office again? <laughs> so there is. You have to be the one to motivate yourself. You have to be the one to inspire yourself to get the job done. In a digital age where you where you can sleep and wake up when you want and still go to work, right? So you have to be the one to put yourself in order and manage yourself. So that is what I'm saying. So it's part of the skills you have to learn. Being able to deliver results even when nobody is there to inspire you, even when nobody is there to push you around. You know your task. You've been able to, you, you manage yourself. You say, I'm going to wake up by it. One of the things that will help you to, to um, have great self-management is routining yourself, putting yourself on a routine, having a sleep schedule. One is very important, having a sleep schedule, having an eating schedule. If you have these schedules, what does it do? It helps you check yourself. This is the time I go to work. This is the time I do. This is the time I do that. So having such schedules will help you you to manage yourself yeah so in the digital age where work is going to be more remote than physical people already a lot of people are working if you if you if you, if you know social media managers uh, and web developers graphic designers and different managers they work remotely so nobody's coming to say uh, you came to work late because you, um, you, you come to work late, you will now, you, because you know somebody will check you when you're coming to work late, because you're not going to clock in, you wake up very early to meet up. Now you're the one to tell yourself when to wake up, when to do your work, when to take a break. You know, so scheduling is very key. And you, you need to have some material, some application, some softwares to be able to schedule yourself and, uh, and, and help yourself. Someone said in the comment section, even as simple as replying emails, you know, you have to schedule yourself. Very, very important. Because in this age, work is going to be more remote than physical. Self-management is going to be one of the things you need to be very productive and give the output that your company needs. Right? So... If, even if you're a founder, I'm not saying it just for those who are working in, the co in, in companies or who are working for other people. As a founder, you are the one to decide when to show up and get the work done. If you were working in the office, you would know that, oh, you have to lead by example, right? So, 
So you have to come to work very early. So I don't understand why I to see you coming very early. I don't show up very early. But now nobody is coming to work. So you, you as a founder will decide whether you're going to wake up and get the job done or not. That is what it is. Right? So I want you guys to know that in the nearest future, a lot of work, a lot of work we need the skills I've mentioned. A lot of work we need the skills I've mentioned. And for you to maintain um, your, for you to maintain um, your role and grow in your job, right? It, you have to ensure that you've got some of these skills. These are just a few of them, right, that we have, that, that I've, I've listed as important that you need to have. So I don't know if you, if you don't mind, you could actually drop a message in the comment section, say what you've learned, okay? Or, or, or tell us, or give, ask a question, if you have a question on the things I have shared already. So we're still waiting for Mr. John. He will join us very soon. So I'm, I'm also going to be uh, putting out one skill that you need, a digital skill that you need to um, do well in the digital age. Very, very important. I call it search hacking. Beyond the works, beyond the beyond the um, uh, workplace skills, this was additional skill that you might need. John has prepared his stuff, so he'll be sharing that with us. So, but I call one of the skills that is very important: search hacking. Somebody will ask, what is search hacking again? Which one be search hacking? It is not everybody that knows how to find the result they are looking for online. It is not everybody that knows how to do that. And it's not everybody that even goes online to search for things. You know, I was teaching in my church the other day. I told them that even if, even if um, the pastor says what you don't understand, search it out. Google it. So I want, I want this 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 part of my teaching is saying you should learn how to search the internet. You should learn how to do that. It's part of the skills you have to develop, where you are not scared of the question anybody's going to ask you. Oh, and what if my boss says I should do this? How will I? When I learned how to leverage Google, I don't say I can't anymore. Thank you, Mr. John is right on this call. I don't know if anybody can give me a fire emoji so I can get Mr. John on board. If I see yes, bring him on. If I see yes, bring him on. I will bring him on. If I, somebody say, if I see yes, bring him on. Say bring um, that DJ on, I'll bring him on. He's on this call already. So I'm gonna bring him on shortly. So uh, as I said, I, I, yeah, come on. Bring it on, bring it on. I want to see the fire emojis. Let's bring him on. Yes, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, um, without taking much of our time, I want to bring Mr. John Rubidi on this call. And, and before um, I bring him on, please make sure you share this link or across the social media platforms so we have more persons join us on the call. Adijo, thank you so much for uh, coming on board. Please permit me to bring you on because the audience are saying, bring him on. Let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Can I bring him on? I want to bring him on. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello, Hi. sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, very, very clearly. I can hear you. Awesome, awesome. Um, please give me one second. I need to just refresh so that the system can pick up my camera. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Oh, okay, okay. So Daddy Jero says he'll be back in 30 seconds. He just wants to refresh the system and join us again. I hope, did you get value from the session I just shared? If you got value, say yes, I got value. If you got value, say yes, I got value. And very soon, that the J.O. will be on board to share even much more value. You know, maybe maybe one of these days, uh, we'll, we'll put a call across and I'll, I'll, I'll share more because I've got more than, um, 
I, I just, I, what I shared on before was um, the skills you need for the workplace in the future, yeah? I have digital skills that you need for the future. And the first one I just shared is called search hacking. You want to learn how to search the internet. You want to learn how to get the kind of results you want. So you don't, you don't start swimming in the ocean of Google results. For, for, for um, 4 million results for one search and you don't know exactly the one to pick up. You want to know the, the strings you put in on search engine and you get the results you need. You want to know where to find the things you want to find, yeah? So very, very important. So uh, thank you so much. I can see all the comments coming in. Uh, I like them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for recapping everything I've shared, Marka. Thank you. Oh my God. Now I feel good. Now I feel good. Okay. Uh, I think Mr. John is here once again. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. So good to be here finally. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Please, guys, can we drop some images for Daddy J.O.? He's here ready yes you yes know. yes 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 let's say welcome to john obidi he's on this call already so let's say welcome to him before he takes us in a fireful session if your head cannot carry this fire please leave this call <laughs> <laughs> come on let's put let's 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 drop the fire emoji for that J O as he comes on board thank you so much sir for uh, uh you know that day you said um excel has prevailed so we're going to have this class thank you so much for yes. allowing me win how would i have won now <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much so um tonight uh while we are waiting for you i just had to take the people on a, a little um talk so now the master is here at the jail Awesome. Uh, I think uh, the floor is yours okay. to begin. Excel, just, just one more thing. That um, YouTube link you sent to me, um, could you please drop it in the private chat so I could just drop it on my Telegram? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do that now. Okay. I'll do that now. So, guys, uh, be ready to have any more people join this call. Okay, so I'm dropping it right away. Okay, I got it. Okay, Noble also dropped it. Noble also dropped it. Okay, I, I, I've seen Noble's one. Okay, awesome. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, guys, get ready. That the JO is here. Keep saying something. I don't know if you if you don't mind. Write something, share this link. Our facilitator is sharing the link to his Telegram channel. Why won't you do the same? Come on, copy that link. Drop in the link. Now, please, can you drop the link also? I just dropped the link on the chat. So you can copy the link of this, or you can copy from your, I think it should be from your browser, and send it out. Let people join this conversation. Yeah? Okay, and there. Let me share it to another channel. Here, here. Where is the AI weekend? There, there. Oasis and send. Okay. My uh, my gang members should be on the stream any minute from now. <clears throat> Great. So, guys, get ready for your night school. All right. So, uh, we've got uh, 73 of us watching now. Hello, everybody. I can see your comments. Well done, everybody. Thanks for joining us. SM Fest team, World Study Hub, Mary Uzoma, uh, Michael Okorie, Chinedu Okorafor, 
Cynthia Chine Miriam, Emeka Christian, uh, Okpara Chinedu, Vivian Ikechi, Wisdom Smart, um, Nkem Jika Immaculate, Misoma Obiozo. I know that name. Um, so good to have you on. Mulondo Daniel, that's uh, you're putting up a, a Ugandan flag. I think that's Ugandan flag. Good to see you here. Uh, Grace Hob, um, Intekem Benson, um, Priska Okoye Lady P. So good to have you all here. Um, such a, a pleasure to be doing this with the SM Fest team, the SM Fest Oweri team. Um, um, this is not night school. Those of us are saying um, they have missed night school. This is strictly an SM Fest program. SM Fest is the is the greatest thing coming out of the East, and I dare say the greatest thing coming out of Nigeria. And uh, this is not the last of the SM Fest programs. Yes, SM Fest tends to hold once a year, but there's so much more you can benefit from SM Fest programs that will be held even more frequently throughout the year until the next physical sm fest events so i would advise you to avail yourself of every opportunity to be a part of these collaborative sm fest trainings they are going to transform your mind transform your business and i know that your life would never remain the same again the reason i collaborated with um, agile excel in the first place was that i i was able to connect with the passion and the genuine love that he has for the people of the Eastern region. And I said, you know what, this passion and this genuine love, I have to connect with it. So when you see people like Aja Excel, that there's nothing in it for them. They're just doing it out of love. Do not take it for granted. I do not take it for granted. And I would like you all to take, to key into it, take the links, share out to your friends, share out to your loved ones, tell everybody about the value you are learning here at SM Fest programs, all right? Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to head right into the show. We are now about uh, 144 uh, people watching. Thanks to everyone who just joined us. And um, now we are going to go live. Um, now, um, I created a topic that I sent out on Telegram just now. I said, winning the digital economy of 2024. Winning the digital economy of 2024 guys listen this is a session like none other uh, that you have ever heard before okay um as you know i never like to teach anything that anybody else is capable of teaching if anybody else was capable of teaching this i would let them do so i only come up to teach something that i know that you have no other means of getting and um, that's what you are in for tonight. So I would advise that you put aside every distractions. If you're using your phone to watch this broadcast, set your phone right now on landscape mode. You know what landscape mode means. It means to turn your phone sideways like this so that the entire real estate of your screen is taken up, taken up. Get your notepads, take notes, because this is about to be a session that will set you up for 2024. And like I always say, for anyone who joins my class, if you do just 10% of what I'm going to tell you, you will literally have no competition. You will literally have no competition, all right? So that said, um, I would like you guys to strap in. We're about 153 now, and we're going to focus on the message. Okay, um, the title again, guys, uh, that I'm giving you, I know we had a different one, but I, I revised it for one that is still in the same theme, but we really take us into 2024, and that is winning the digital economy of 2024. Just yesterday, I was at Olakule Shorion's program where the title of my talk was Creating a Monopoly. The, the title of my talk there was Creating a Monopoly. I'm going to be taking some parts of my talk that I gave them there and give us this talk on winning the digital economy of 2024. Now, why is it winning? Um, I know that winning sounds a bit adversarial, right? And, um, you know, in, 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 in certain circles, people tend to say things like, oh, the sky is wide enough for two birds to fly, all right? Those are things that sound very correct, but those are things that poor people like to say, okay? There's a school of the rich and the school of the poor. The problem is that the school of the poor does not always look like the school of the poor. 
because the things that are said in the school of the poor, they tend to sound true. They sound nice. They sound cute. But they are not the, they, they, they are not the total truth. And they're not the things that will help you to step in to a higher level of greatness. In the real top echelons of power and business, it is heavily competitive. You have to win. All right? You have to win. And so when I say winning the digital economy, of 2024, it means what it says. Now, first of all, um, let me lead us into this conversation by saying one thing, okay? Or rather, by asking a question, why is it, okay? Follow me. Why is it that at a, at a time where a lot of Nigerians are running away from Nigeria? Follow my train of thought. Why is it that at a time where a lot of Nigerians are running away from the country, the Jackma syndrome is happening? The Americans are coming. The Pakistanis are coming. The Indians are coming. The Lebanese are coming. Why is that happening? What do they see that our people do not see? Now, I need you guys to apply a bit of nuance to the things that I'm saying. For those of you who are used to my teachings, especially on night school, um, you understand not to make hasty judgments about what you are hearing. You've got to slow it down and pass it through your powers of critical thinking. Don't be in a haste to assume what you think I am saying. Think it through. Every moment with me is a thinking exercise. Think it through. So now you might hear me say, why are people leaving the country when others are coming? And because you are not so rigorous in your thinking, you will hop to the assumption that I'm saying, do not jack back. Did I say that? No. But you will rush to that assumption because maybe you're not so rigorous in your thinking. So slow it down and think a little bit more rigorously. I'm asking an objective question. It does not say jack back or do not jack back. We are asking the question of why. Why are we asking that question? There is a deeper principle there that the question of why will help us to unlock. So I'm going to ask the question again, and I want us all to think about it together. Why is it that at this time where the Nigerian man is running over to the West, they are coming here? What do they see that we do not see? And in order to answer that question, I'm going to take us on a, a journey um, of some experiences, and I'll paint a complete picture. You know, there used to be a Nigeria before this Nigeria. There used to be a Nigeria before this Nigeria, right? And if for those of you who are close to your parents or your grandparents, if you ask them, there was once a time where Nigeria used to be a high trust society, right? There was once a time where Nigeria used to be a high trust society. And there, there, are, there are societies that we call high trust, and there are those that we call low trust, okay? For example, Canada is a high-trust society. Nigeria is a low-trust society. What's the difference? The difference is that in Canada, they trust you until you provide a reason not to be trusted. That's the way it is. In Nigeria, the rule is you distrust everyone until they provide you a reason to trust them. It's a low-trust society. However, there used to be a time when Nigeria was a high-trust society a long time ago. And so in that Nigerian society, there was something called the night market. What was the night market? The night market was such that when those women at the marketplace, when it's time for them to go home, they did not pack their goods, the fruit and the yams. and They didn't pack them and lock them away. They left them there and put, they used stones to denote how much each item cost. And they left it there and went home. Now, if you were a traveler and you were walking by and you wanted to buy fruit or food, you would just go to the table there, 
see how much it costs. You put the money down there, take what you wanted, and go. When they came to the, the market in the morning, they would see all the money they had made in their sleep, and they would take it and go. That was the high trust society. But the thing with that is times have changed. All right? Now we live in a low trust society. In a high trust society, there was no real need for the Nigerian man to learn marketing and sales and influence and persuasion because at that time there was no real need for that and if you have an understanding of evolutionary biology the different species the different civilizations only evolved in the direction of stress all right the different civilizations only evolved in the direction of their stress. So first of all, how many of you know why we are black? You know why we are black? All right? You know why we are black? If you ask any scientist, especially those that uh, majored in biology, right, they will tell you that life began where? In Africa. Life began in Africa. The first man was African. The first woman was African. The first human beings were African. Therefore, theoretically, the first human beings were black. Why were they black? Because in Africa, there is so much sun, right? There is so much sun, all right? There is so much sun. And in order to protect your body from the, from the excessive sun rays, we had to develop that pigment we have to develop that melanin to protect us from the sun and that's why anyone born here or from here is typically darker skinned it is an it is an evolution or it's an adaptation to protect us from the sun but as people began to migrate away from the center and people migrated to the colder regions of the earth where there was very little sun your pigment had to lighten up so that your skin could absorb as much of the sun that existed there, which was very scarce. So in order for your skin to open up and absorb as much sun, it had to lighten up. And that's why you are a white man. Because you simply migrated to a place that was colder. We are black because we stayed in a place that was had a lot of sun exposure. The black to protect us. And your own, your white, was also to help absorb as much of the sun that almost um, did not exist in their area. So that's why they were white and we were, we were black. But you see, the physical morphology was not the only adaptation. If you migrated to a place where so many things did not grow and there was no natural food, you had to grow in craftiness. So I'm going to ask you guys a question, all right? I'm going to ask you guys a question. What grows in the United Kingdom? What grows there? What kind of food grows in the United Kingdom? Think about it. Not much. Potatoes, I think, will be the most popular thing. But what else? Very little grows there, all right? Very little. And maybe fish, but... You don't grow fish, you're just in the waters that surround them, all right? But then you come to Africa and everything grows. You've got coconuts, all kinds of fruit, all kinds of food, all right? Do you know that even cassava, that we have gari and fufu, do you know that cassava is not Nigerian? Cassava is originally Brazilian. And I didn't know this until I went to Brazil and they served me gari with rice. But they, they don't call it gari, they call it something else and they funkify it a little bit and season it some more. And I was shocked to find gari. Their own gari is softer than our own. It's the way they make it. And I learned that cassava was not Nigerian. It's Brazilian. It was brought here through slave trade and all that and it found soil here that was good for its growth and it became our thing as well. Right? 
So you realize that Africa was naturally blessed. We don't have winter. You go to Obodo Yibo, there is every time they say winter is coming, winter is coming. Everybody is barricading themselves in. During winter, nothing can grow. Nobody can work. Everybody is just indoors managing everything that they had saved during summer. And they are waiting earnestly for winter to be over so that they can come out, right? So that they can come out and um, work again and do all of those things. But in Africa, we were balling in Africa. We never even had to evolve to create um, refrigerators. Well, we always made food fresh. You come to Africa, you see fruit spoiling on the trees. There was an abundance. So we were balling in Africa. They, where they came from, not much grew there. And because not much grew there, what do you do when you have to make a lot from a little? You have to grow in craftiness. And unfortunately, some of the consequences of all that craftiness ended up in slavery, enslaving other human beings and the transatlantic slave trade, colonialism, exploiting other countries to enrich yourself with way to reap where you did not sow. But on the flip side of things, here in Africa, because things were abundant, the thing that was the source of our blessing was the reason we did not evolve. Because things were abundant, we tended not to be as crafty about grabbing as the colonizers. And because of that, they have become advanced when it comes to sales psychology, influence, marketing, branding, the things that help to separate people from their money consensually. But the black man still does not know how to do it. I mean, when I say the black man, I mean the black man that has not undergone any kind of training. The black man in his natural state. Yeah? And so the white man knows how to collect the white man's money. They also know how to collect the black man's money. But you see the black man, the black man has not learned how to collect the black man's money. And so when he tries, 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 fails, is not working out, he heads out. He leaves Nigeria to a place where he will be better rewarded for his labor. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing, the first thing that you should have been taught as a child, let me tell you, the first thing you should have been taught as a child, okay? And I like to use Mr. Bean to explain this better. Has anybody here watched Mr. Bean? You guys remember Mr. Bean? I watched a lot of Mr. Bean when I was a child. And if you watch the beginning um, of Mr. Bean, of Mr. Bean, or the beginning of every episode, he just he falls from the sky. Boom! Yeah? He just falls from the sky with a large, with a loud thud. Boom! And he starts groping around. You know, and he can't talk. So the theory is that Mr. Bean was never born as a child to go through the human experience and grow into adulthood. He just fell from the sky. Maybe he's an alien or an angel, right? And he just fell and he has to now start figuring out the ways of human beings. That's why Mr. Bean does not talk. He makes, you know, unintelligible sounds and gesticulates and does crazy stuff. It's because he's a... He just fell from the sky. He can't talk, and he's trying to learn the way human beings do things. That's why he acts so um, weirdly, and it became comedy for us. So imagine that you were Mr. Bean. Imagine you were Mr. Bean. Um, you were not born into this world. You just you were already an adult when you fell from the sky and you landed on this planet Earth. All right, and then the first feeling that you felt when you landed on earth was hunger. You felt hungry. You asked the next person, say, ah, I am hungry. What do I do? Well, you're a human being. Human beings, when they feel hungry, it means they need something called food. Really? What is food? Well, food is something that we put into our body so we can stay alive and have some energy. Okay. 
how do I get food? Well, you have to go to the store and buy some. Buy? What does it mean to buy something? Oh, this newcomer. All right, you go to the store and you give them something called money. And in exchange for that, they'll give you food. Money? What is money? Oh, boy. All right, look. Money is something that has value. Don't ask me why it has value. That's a long story. But it has value. And sometimes it comes in form of a paper note. Sometimes it is a coin. But when you take that money and go to the store, hand it over to them, and they will give you food. Okay. So can I make money? Um, no, that's against the rules of the game. You cannot make money. Only the central bank is allowed to make money. So do I just go into the central bank and take it? No, <laughs> that is bank robbery. You'll go to jail. All right, I'm not allowed to make money. I'm not allowed to go to the bank that makes money to take some for myself. How the hell do I get money? And you're like, yes, that's a good question now. You're asking the right question. How do I get money? All right, cool, whatever. Right question. How do I get money? Well, according to the rules of this game, the only money that can come into your own pocket is the money that first of all exists in somebody else's pocket. Interesting. So does that mean I can just walk over to this man now and take the money that's in his pocket? No, you can't do that. That is robbery. You'll go to jail. So what do I do? Well, you can obtain that man's money, but only through his consent. Okay, that should be easy. I'll just walk up to him and ask him nicely. I mean, walk up to him and say, hey, sir, give me money, please. And he looks at you like, get the hell out of here. And he walks out on you. Hmm, that didn't work. But then, you keep, you, but then you keep on observing that man. And you notice that when he was thirsty, he walked over to that store, handed them money, and they gave him water. Huh. So that man is willing to consensually give up his money in exchange for water, in exchange for food, in exchange for a place to live, in exchange for the clothes that he wears. Oh, hold on. What if I had something that that man also valued? Could I offer it to him in exchange for this money? Interesting. And then you keep on observing for how many times this man drinks water in a day. Or how many times this man goes over there to buy that water. And then you get a lot of those bottles of water. And you look at the store he normally goes to. And you go there and you burn down that store. I'm just giving an example. Don't go, don't go and do anything crazy, right? You go and burn down that store so he has nowhere else to go to. And while you see him thirsty and looking confused, you show him a bottle of water, very cold water. You're like, you want this water? And he's like, yes, yes, give me water. You're like, ah, 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 money. And in that moment, you just made your first offer. You gave him the bottle of water for the first time in your life. Somebody gave you money consensually. And the light bulb goes off in your head like, oh, so that's how this works. So if I did this to get this, how do I get more of this money? Interesting. And then you start learning that this water you sold to this man for a hundred naira, somebody else sold to another man for a thousand naira, the same bottle of water. And you're asking questions because that is the greatest power of homo sapiens, of human beings, people who claim they were made in God's image. Your greatest power is your brain and how it works, your mind, your powers of observation observing cause and effect. And you're watching like, this other man got a thousand naira for the same thing that I got a hundred naira for. I wonder why. 
And that begins our study of branding. Oh, he had a fantastic package. Sales. Ah, he was exceptionally convincing. Marketing. Oh, this man sold his water in a kiosk. The other man sold his water in a hotel. Just by changing the environment, one has more perceived value than the other. Wow. And that begins your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding into the subject of how money is made and accumulated. You getting that? I'm taking this um, precept upon precept, step by step, building upon the points. This is what it means to think in first principles. So now we learn that. And you keep on innovating. And so now you say, okay, I got money from one person. How do I get money from multiple people? You now learn about media. A means of communicating your product. Media. You now learn about mass media. A means of communicating my product to a large number of people. The masses. Mass media. New media. And that's how money is made. Now, this is the white man's science. The rules of the modern world. Everything about the modern world. All the rules have been rewritten by the white man. The problem is, the black man, the African, the Nigerian, is playing a game that they don't know they are playing. The few that know they are playing the game are not aware of the rules. How can you win a game whose rules you do not know? Well, the people winning the game are the ones that wrote the rules. So they know the rules because they wrote the rules. They are always changing the rules. Why would they not win? Well, you, you are playing a game whose rules you do not know. Why wouldn't you lose? So everything about the modern world has been rewritten from governance. In governance, we practice democracy. Democracy is the white man's precept. It's not ours. We didn't create democracy. We practice their system of government. Banking, commerce, finance, everything about the modern world, travel, the rules have been rewritten. Insurance, all right? Now, even in the game of sales marketing and the art of getting money, by the way, there's a book by that title, which I think you should read. It's called The Art of Money Getting by P.T. Barnum. Very old book. It's centuries old, okay? Uh, the, the Art of Money Getting by P.T. Barnum, but that's just by the wayside. But all these rules have been rewritten by the white man. But the black man is still operating based on the principles of the night market. And how do you know? Because it is even in our language, when you listen to the words that we use and the meanings that we attach to those words, what does the black man, not the black man in general, the Nigerian, let me just say the Nigerian, what does the Nigerian think selling means? You see, Nigerians, and again when I say Nigerians, I mean the unschooled Nigerian that has not gone to learn how marketing is really done. You've not gone to learn the white man's magic. The regular Nigerian, okay? How does the regular Nigerian see selling? The regular Nigerian still thinks that selling means exchanging money for goods and services. And most of you here probably think that's what it means. So when you say, ah, where Angela go? Oh, Angela go market. She they sell. All right? So the Nigerian still thinks that's what selling means. But how does a white man see selling? When you watch movies like The Wolf of Wall Street, yeah, and the lead character there, the Leonardo, Leonardo the, the DiCaprio character says, sell me this pen. But there's no money being it. says, sell me this pen. What is he actually saying? When used in that context, we understand that selling is not necessarily exchanging something for money. It says, sell me something. It means convince me of something. To sell means to convince someone of something. Now, maybe in that exchange, money gets exchanged, but not always. 
sell me this thing. It means convince me of this idea. And that is why when someone is trying to convince you of something and you are not convinced, what do you say? I don't buy that. I don't buy that. Why did you say that? Think. Why did you say that? There's no money being exchanged. Why do you say in response to you not being convinced of something, why do you say, I don't buy that idea? That's because in that exchange, something is always being exchanged. Maybe not money. It could be an agreement. It could be compliance. It could be favors. It could be goodwill. It could be agreements. And also, when you do not agree with what somebody is convincing you on, what do you, um, I mean, I mean, when you, when you agree, I mean, when you agree with what somebody is convincing you on, what do you say? I'm so, I'm so, yeah? When you, when you agree with someone, what do you, what do you say to yourself? You say, I'm so. Why do you say that? Those things are in English language for a reason. Think. And when you understand that the white man has one definition of selling, the black man has an opposite definition of selling, but the rules of the modern world were written by the white man. So the world is moving on based on one definition of selling. You are playing the game that they are playing based on an, on, on an inaccurate definition. How will you be rich? How would you? It's not juju. Go and pray to your God 10 times a day. You will not be rich until you understand the game that you are playing, learn the rules of the game, build your competence at playing that game better than any other players. And that is how you get money. So you've got to go back and revisit your vocabulary. What does it mean to sell? And that is why you see a lot of people here, you sell things, but you are still very poor. Because you don't know what it takes to collect the black man's money. You're still operating like the people of the... I hope I'm still coming through to you guys. Oh, I was frozen for a second. Anyway, because you are still operating on the principles of the night market. Where you are in the market and I say, Eh, I have Gary. He's five naira. Bye. No persuasion needed. No marketing. No branding. Nothing. There's Gary. He's five naira. I have it here. Oh, yeah, bye. That's all you do. But in the modern world, things are more complicated. You don't just say, I am a website designer. Uh, I design websites. Patronize me. You are a joker. Hey, I, I, I'm an app developer. I do app developments. Uh, hey, the one app development that I do is 200,000 Naira. So patronize me. You are a joker. The rules have changed. If you were born in the 50s, maybe that would have worked. But in the modern world, that is not what selling means. Selling is the entire process of convincing them beyond every reasonable doubt that if they don't take you up on your offer, they might die. That's what selling means. And the white man has figured that out. So back to the original question that I asked everybody. All right? Back to the original question I asked everybody. Now I've given you guys this whole sermon. I'm going to ask the original question that I started with. Okay? I've given you guys an entire front, back, left, right, 360. Let's go back to the first question. Why is it that at this time, when the Nigerian man, not just Nigerian, I'm using us as an example, when the Nigerian man is running away from poverty and calamity and whatever it is that's chasing him over to the West. The American, the Lebanese, the Indian, the Pakistanis, they are coming here. Why? Why? Because when the white man comes here, they are coming here with a proper system, a rule book that is guaranteed to work in any weather and in any economy. The white man knows how to take money from the white man. But guess what? 
the white man also knows that we human beings are very alike in as much as we are different we are very alike he knows that it is the same principles by which you take money from the white man that you will also apply to take money from the black man and he has gotten exceptionally good at it over the years so when he comes here yes there's market here we see the market they see the market but well, they have the skills with which to collect money from that market. You do not. They are coming here with exceptionalism. They know what customer service should be. They know what branding should be. They know what marketing should be. And you would know. Call the black man's business. Call the Nigerian man's business in Nigeria. Hello. Oyeneku. I'm yang you, I'm yang you. That what? Eh, hey, you, you, we don't have, you'll come back tomorrow. Eh. Hey. What the hell is that? Are you okay? Is something wrong with you? What are you doing? You know, if you are, if you behave like that, I encourage you to jack bar because you can't make it in this country. You cannot make it. You are a failure. Just jack bar and go and take one job somewhere. What is that? Call the white man's business. And I mean the white man's business in Nigeria or not the one over there. The one in Nigeria where they employed Nigerians and trained the hell out of them into shape. Call them. Hello, good afternoon. Funke speaking. How may I help you? Thank you so much for calling. Will that be all for today? Thank you so much for calling. We appreciate your business. Do have a lovely day. Same market. Even you, as a Nigerian, will patronize the white man's business. Because you don't take nonsense. So back to what I'm saying. White man knows how to take the white man's money and knows how to take the black man's money. But the black man does not know how to take the black man's money. He doesn't know that the rules have changed. There's something called creating a fantastic emotional experience out of every sales process. And people have emotions. Africans, yes, we used to be a bit emotionless. But the rules have been rewritten. Africans too, we love being toasted. We love being treated nice. Everybody enjoys the feeling of someone picking up the phone and greeting us with respect. Greeting us with royalty. Hello, ma. Some of you have not been called ma in your life. You've never been talked to with respect in your life. So the first time you call a business and they greet you with that respect, ah, you feel so good. You will forever patronize them just because of respect. For some people, it's experiential marketing. Go Google it on your own spare time. Experiential marketing. It deals with the experience, the physical, sensual, not sexual, sensual, right? The physical, sensual experiences that people encounter when they encounter your brand. For example, you walk into the off an office and it's air conditioned and the fragrance of royalty hits you. Already it is coloring your perception of how much you will spend in that place. You don't know. But they have studied you and they know you, they know you more than you know yourself. I remember the other day I, I had a speaking engagement in Lagos. And this particular speaking engagement, it came on short notice. So, and there was a dress code, a specific dress code. Ah, which can wahala. Now, the color of suit that this event required, you no know, Lagos people get plenty of wahala. The particular color of suit that these people required, I didn't have it. It was a very interesting psychedelic dress code. So I had to quickly hurry because the, the, the thing was happening the very next day. I had to hurry around Lekki, VI to see which store i could go into to buy that suit and there's this so naturally i went to the last place i bought suits in lagos 
All right. The last place, because normally, you know, I live more out of Nigeria than in Nigeria. So when I'm buying clothes, I typically only buy my clothes when I'm abroad, you know, but now I'm here and I need to buy clothes. Okay, what do I do? So the last time I bought any suits in Nigeria, let me just go straight there. So I don't have to go um, spend too much time on the road. So I went straight to this high profile store. Where, where I, you know, the last suit I bought from them was very good, very high quality. So I walked in there. I, I, this, this, is, this is me. I did not need to be convinced to buy the suit. I desperately needed this suit because the event was a high profile event. It was happening tomorrow. If I just found anything that was my size, I would have taken it and gone on. I, I was very desperate to get the suit. So you ain't got to sell me. Just show me the thing. I'll give you the money and take the thing and go away, right? So. I got to the store. Yeah, you know, this fantastic place. I've been here before and I love the experience. I even know the owner. I got inside and the sales girl was like, hello, sir. I'm like, hi. Um, and, and, you know, I was hurrying around. So, you know, you no know, hot Lagos sun. And I walked into their, their store. Expensive suits everywhere, but there was no light. And I asked the lady, I'm sorry, I really want to buy a suit, but I'm sweating. This is hot. What's going on? Hey, sorry, sir. They are working on the gen. Oh, Jesus Christ. You guys have no right to be charging this much for suits. And you have no light. And you think that your bloody excuse of sorry, sir, is enough? Well, I badly wanted the suit. So I endured. And I was trying to pick through. But at a point, I'm like, wait, I'm hot. I'm sweating. I'm probably going to have to try on this suit. Ugh. So you know what? I can't. I walked away. Because of light, I walked away. And I went to another store that was not as popular as this other store. This store has many followers on Instagram. It's high class. The who is who in Lagos, they buy suits there. But because of, of the experience, I walked away. I went to another store close by that had lights and that was air-conditioned. I beg. And I bought a suit. So I beg it. It was okay. It was fine. And I, I did my thing for the day. Right? <laughs> so once they mention names, why can I go? Why do people like fights like this? I don't want to mention names. Okay. So yeah. Um, so that's the whole thing with experiential marketing. Now compare that. I remember um, in Dubai. So of you know, I I live in Dubai. In Dubai. Um, I went to buy perfumes. Not anything big like suits or anything. Perfumes. <laughs> Perfume. Um, this very rich Arabian perfume. So I went to the store. I walked in and I said, um, um, excuse me, please. I would like to buy some trousers of your perfume. Said, oh, hello, sir. Please have a seat. Um, we'll, 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 we'll attend to you shortly. And they, I'm like, I, and I just sat down and they're like, hello, sir, tea or coffee? Ah. <laughs> this one, I even want to give me tea and coffee. How much do you think I want to spend in this place? Wait, wait, wait. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a haste. Calm down, sister. Calm down. <laughs> Where am I? Did I enter the wrong place? It's perfume I want to buy. <laughs> You know when you enter a place and they're offering you tea, coffee, and refreshments without any money? <laughs> they don't, they won't set you up. <laughs> I'm like, wait. I not to get money like that. I just want to inquire. I inquire, I come inquire. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> this is a run, you know, but that was just my Nigerianness that was coming out there. <laughs> they did not set me up. Say, I drink their tea, I beat their, their coffee. I don't come by perfume. Please, I'm an honest Nigerian. I don't want to promise what I cannot do. Let me see if I like the perfume first. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? But they had to explain that, no, 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 it's okay. It's all complimentary. I still did not trust them. Because <laughs> that was my first time. I just newly moved to Dubai. You know, I was not used to that <laughs> culture. I said, before they go home me now and say, hey, all these Nigerians, they are all criminals. You see what they do? Please, I take or beg you. Eh? I have a strong family name. I don't embarrass my family back home. You hear me so? <laughs> so, but anyway, 
they explain that no, it's all complimentary. You don't need to buy anything. It's just a way of welcoming you into the family. And anytime you make up your mind that you would like to um, purchase any perfumes, we hope that you think of us. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know? I said, wow. You know? And um and I made it a point of call every well not every day, but multiple times a week. I would walk through any of you that has ever gone to Dubai would um attest to what I'm about to say now. That sometimes just walk through Dubai Mall, either Dubai Mall or Mall of the Emirates, both in Dubai. Just walking through the mall is a master class on marketing and sales. You know? So after that experience, I used to just go and walk through and I would make notes. And I would say, these people, they have mastered the art of collecting money. They are so good at it. Yeah? So back to what I'm saying. Is that the white man knows how to collect money. But the black man has not quite learned it. Okay. So remember, I don't want to stray too far from the topic, okay? I want to keep this on topic because the topic is what? Winning the digital economy of 2024. But in order to, in order to, um, in order to bring it home to winning the digital economy of 2024, I have to give you a holistic understanding of our origins as human beings, as Africans, as Nigerians, what the world is looking like moving forward, right? And how you are to engage in this game. Okay, so I've talked about sales in a generic manner and the deficiencies in the Nigerian mindset. Now let's come into the online game. And remember what I said, guys, you don't even have to be too good. Even if you can just do 10% of what we are talking about here, all right? You are going to be massively successful. Okay. And let's talk about the digital game. When you look at the internet today, there are so many people here, some of you here as well, who sell things online. Yeah? You sell things online, but you sell things online like it's night market. I am teaching a class, and in that class, you will learn digital marketing skills. The price is uh, 25,000 Naira. Who the hell are you? What are you doing? Is that what I told you selling was? Don't be lazy about selling. Selling, remember, selling is not offering something for money. That's not selling. That is the end point of what the transaction should be, right? That is not selling. What is selling? Selling is what? Convincing somebody of an idea and that's why hollywood is always selling ideas but you don't know because money is not being exchanged something else is being exchanged your compliance your belief your loyalty you know so selling is convincing somebody of an idea when you understand what selling is, you then know that selling is not only what happens when you present your offer. Selling is everything you do to convince the world that if they don't buy from you, they will never be all right. I mean, that's a bit too dramatic, but you get my drift. So it's everything you post, every aspect of your business activities that you perform, even on social media, Every single day, that is selling. And even the things that you do where money is not being exchanged, it is selling. The best kind of selling is the one that happens when money is not exchanged, when money is not changing hands. That's the best kind of selling because they are giving you something else. There are four currencies of life. I always talk about four currencies of life, and they are measured using the mnemonic M E A T, meat. Your money, your energy, attention, and time. These are the four currencies of life. And your success in life will, deter, will be determined by the degree to which you used or abused, invested, or wasted these four currencies. 
your money, your energy, your attention, and your time. How are these four currencies currencies? Money is the most popular one. So we spend money. Energy, when you have used up all your energy, what do you say? I am spent. Why did you say that? Remember, vocabulary, language. Why do you say you're spent? I am spent. That's energy. A, your attention. Why do we say pay attention? Pay attention because it's a currency. But many of you don't value it. The last one is your time. That's how we say you spend time. These are four currencies. So in every aspect of your sales activities, if people are not giving you their money, it is still selling. They are giving you their energy. They are giving you their attention. If they are giving you your, their time, that is still selling. These four currencies of life, they bow to the laws of energy and the laws of matter. What do the laws of energy and matter say? It says that what energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but can be transformed from one form into another. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can be transformed from one form to another. Same thing with matter. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed, but can be transformed from one form to another. So when people give you their attention, do not despise it. Do not abuse it. That attention is money waiting to happen. If you are discerning enough and you are able to convert that attention into another form of energy, another form of currency, money. People will give you of their time and you can convert that into another form of energy, money. People will give you their energy and you can convert that to another form of, uh, of energy, of currency, which is money. Are we learning something? And so when you come onto the internet, you will see that people are lazy about how they sell. You don't know what it takes to collect money from a person on the internet. You don't know what it takes to build trust. So let me teach you a couple of things that you need to do in order to win the game of 2024. Okay? First of all, in Nigeria, let me tell you something. In this country, Nigeria, it is so easy to make money. I saw somebody commenting at the beginning. Um, saying that, um, wait, I need to. I just cough briefly. Okay. I saw somebody commenting earlier on and say that um, the white people are no longer coming to Nigeria as much. That's not true. I don't know which culture you are looking at, but the Indians, Pakistanis, and the Lebanese. They are all over the place. They own a lot of the businesses in Lagos and Abuja. Yeah? So, um, the point is, the Nigerian has to learn how to collect money from the Nigerian, even on the internet. The internet has, the internet has certain rules and ways that would allow you to make money. And let me tell you, this Nigerian economy, there is a reason why, why the number one economy in Africa. Now, people who are not so schooled, may not understand. Please, I need you guys to really listen, especially if you're not very educated. This is not for you to have ego or pride. I'm not educated. Calm down. If you're not educated, you're not educated. It's a fact of life. It's not about pride or confessions. Okay? Calm down. Listen carefully. A lot of times, we brag that Nigeria is the um, number one economy in Africa. But because our undereducation thinks that being the number one economy in Africa has to be the same as poverty rates in the country, we miss the point. So, like, if I'm number one, Africa, number one economy in Africa, the white people suffering. 
one has nothing to do with the other. And I need you guys to understand this. I always say that in this life, there are four things every child must learn. And if you are a parent here, ah, I don't want to digress. If you are a parent here, there are four things every child must learn. I don't mean adult, too. child. Biology, understanding your body and how it works. What makes you depressed? What makes you happy? What makes you creative? What makes you productive? Understand how this body works. What kind of foods are not good for your spirit? What kinds of foods are good for your spirit? They can be different for each person. Figure that out as biology one. Number two is geopolitics. How do events around the world affect you and your ascendancy towards power? Number three is language. What's the origin of language and how does language affect the things that we do? What is the meaning of language? When I say this and when the white man says this, do we mean the same thing? But number four is one that relates to what we are saying here, and that is economics. Economics is the science of how money moves in a given geography. Very important. How can you say you want to make money and you have no knowledge of economics? How does that make sense? But if I ask you now, but you know your Bible back to back, but the one thing that would ensure your prosperity on this earth, economics, you know nothing about it and you've never asked any questions. So when you watch the news and they're always saying on TV, the economy, the economy, the economy, how are you able to decode what they are saying if you know nothing of economics? Economics, that has to do with demand and supply. The price of goods and how they affect demand and supply. Opportunity cost, scale of preference, macroeconomic principles, microeconomics, GDP. Yeah, yeah. What, are all the, what do all these things mean? Every child must have a knowledge of it before the age of 10. And if I say that, then you as an adult, you know that you have your work cut out for you. All right? Anyway, the reason I went there is that why do we say Nigeria is the number one economy in Africa? Why? Because one of the indices by which you measure how healthy an economy is, listen, is how quickly money moves in that country and in what volumes. In what volumes people are spending money? Listen very carefully because you cannot say you are a Nigerian. You don't know this. It's an abuse of your Nigerian citizenship. Because people who are not Nigerians, they know what, what I'm about to tell you. They know it. And it's the one reason they are rushing here. You were born here. But this thing you don't know. So you despise what you were born with. So what does it mean? To be the number one economy or to have a very huge, large economy. It means that money moves very quickly in that economy. It also means that money moves in volumes, in large volumes in that economy. So when they are measuring the, the, the size of the economy, they also measure things like what was the consumer spending in that economy in the past year. Let me give you an example. Last week, I read in the news that Sweden just entered a recession. I think it's that Sweden or Norway. I mix them up sometimes. Sweden just entered a recession. And when you read the reasons for their recession, they will say one of the reasons is that consumer spending dropped significantly. Also that they don't have such a high population. So how do you get more people to buy, 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 buy more things? If they're not buying and those people, they are not giving birth to more children that will buy. Spending is going to go down. The economy is going to go down. They are going to a recession. What enables a healthy economy is not the quality of life of the citizens. That's a different thing. What enables the health of an economy is how often people are spending money and in what volumes people are spending money. So when they say that the economy of Nigeria is number one in Africa, what it means is that Nigeria is the one place in Africa where so much buying happens and in large volumes. That's what they are saying. And because over there in the West, they are not giving birth to any more children. They are not expanding. They are not reproducing as fast as we are in Africa. 
when they sell to everybody that can be sold to in their country, how are they going to grow? How are they going to expand? They look to Nigeria, the largest economy in Africa, and see how they can sell their stuff to us and collect money. That is why the white man is coming here, because here people are spending money. Yes, I can agree with you that there are so many things wrong with Nigeria. And if you followed me for so, um, for, for so long, you would have heard me rant about the things about Nigeria that are not okay. That notwithstanding, i like to ask this question also. All your life, you have suffered the consequences of being born Nigerian. If you were shown one of the advantages, wouldn't you take it? Don't you think that you have earned it at this point, after suffering all your life for being Nigerian? Do you think you've earned a couple of advantages? Of course you have. So riddle me this. The same place that these people are scrambling for and coming to Nigeria. They are coming here to get a piece of the money that is being moved around in the economy every single day. Where is the money coming from? We don't know. We don't care. But in Nigeria, there is huge economic activity. Every single day, every single week, every single month, people are buying and they want a piece of that money. I read somewhere on one website, I'm not sure that it's true, I've not done the research, but it said that Nigerians spend about $600 million every day on sports betting. And you say money, no, they this country. No, you are not skilled at collecting that money. But the Lebanese man is skilled, so he will come here and he'll collect it. The Pakistani is skilled, he will come here and he'll collect it. The Indian is skilled, they will come here and, co and collect it. But you are not skilled at collecting this money. You're just not good enough. And hopefully after tonight's lesson, you'll be good enough. And I'm sure Carolyn Wabara is also coming tomorrow. I know her session is going to be very impactful. Carolyn Wabara is a, is a woman I, I have learned so much from. Um, she knows I love her, I honor her, I respect her. Uh, when I was just getting started in digital marketing in 2012, she's the first person I ever learned from, 2012. You know, so I, I trust that her session with you guys today is going to be, um, is going to be bombastic, yeah? So, now you understand, the, and, and this is just one side of the figures. I'm sure if you go and research on other aspects of the Nigerian economy, you will be wowed. You'll be like, where did they see this money? It's not your business. Your business is that the money is there. And a part of that money must enter your pocket. That's your mandate. All right? So, now we have established that there is money in Nigeria. That might confuse you a little bit. It might confuse you. You might be like, okay, good, there's money in Nigeria. So, so why is not entering my... my, my my pocket, good, good question. Start asking the right questions. To now make you think, okay, so what will make a Nigerian part with their money to give me? Let's now go back to the example we started with. When you observe, what do Nigerians spend money on? All right, what do Nigerians spend money on? Don't be emotional about it. Be objective. Look at the data. What do Nigerians spend money on? Well, no, a number of things. They spend money on um, cosmetics. Go and check the amount of money that is moved in that sector. Beauty industry in Nigeria. Nigerian women will do anything to look beautiful. Not all Nigerian women. People that are like, hey, not all. Poor thinkers everywhere. Right? So much money being spent there. You look in there and see what piece of that pie you can corner for yourself. If you don't do it, somebody else outside that sees the gold, they will come and do it. Now, when you look at cosmetics, you look at clothing, textiles, and everything, you can now create your strategy. Now, I want you people to write this down. For those of you that are inspired to think about the... Um, the products side of things. Now, you know what Nigerians are buying. How can you provide those things that Nigerians are buying and get them to buy from you? Now, everybody should at least, even if you don't want to go into it, 
you should at least know what we call white labeling. Okay? I like the MC. I can see Eketi Edimaite is putting some figures there. Um, said actually Nigerians um, spent um, 2.3 trillion. I don't know what currency that is. Maybe Naira. 2.3 trillion Naira on alcohol. Um, Organet Tega Acre says Nigerians spent 1 trillion Naira on data in October. Right? Okay. Do your research and the money that Nigerians spend per month, per year, it will shake your brain. Okay? Anyway, so for those who are maybe inspired to look into the product side of things, every Nigerian, or everybody watching me here, because it's not in my interest for every Nigerian, only those that are here with the SM First team, okay? Every Nigerian ought to know the meaning of white labeling right every nigerian ought to know the meaning of white labeling so a lot of times yeah you know american companies do not even bother manufacturing they just white label all right they some of them actually think that it's a stupid thing to go and open your factory i mean i'm just saying that's an american thing it may not apply to you um so for example things like shoes and bags and clothes listen nigerians are buying these things already Figure out a way to sell them. If that's your line, no, there are other things you can do. It's not the only thing. I'm just giving you options, okay? Now, there's something called white labeling. White labeling is the practice of having your own clothing line or shoe line or jewelry line without having a factory and, in many cases, with no money down. So there are these factories um, abroad, usually in Asia, usually in China, Vietnam, usually in Asian markets. You know, sometimes in Taiwan, right? So there are these uh, factories in these Asian countries that produce any kind of products, all kinds of products. And they don't want to be known. They don't want to, to be branded, none of that. They would brand that product with any logo that you tell them to, a.k.a. your logo. So your homework on this aspect, your homework is to get on Google, and this is a life hack I'm going to tell you right now, a business hack. Get on Google and search white label space anything or private label space anything. I'm saying that because white label and private label are used interchangeably most of the times. So you can say white label this or private label this. So we say uh, private label cosmetics right now you will see companies that do private label cosmetics yeah and you can set, start your own cosmetics line right now without being in a manufacturer of cosmetics they'll ask you to bring your logo bring your brand name they'll put it on the packaging and they'll send to you you are in business how many women are into makeup right now how many women here are into makeup i want you right now to open Google. Let's do practical right now. Open, or oh, you know what? I can't wait for you before. Let me, let me share my screen and make this um, more interactive. So I'm gonna share my screen and do this. Okay, so um, Excel, could you just help me um, put it up on the screen? Let me get these guys to see what's on here. Okay, so I'm sure everybody can see my screen. So I just Googled private label cosmetics. And I'm going to zoom in so that we can see it better. Is that all sponsored? I don't like using sponsored. Let me just look at this one. Let me just open a random one here. All right. 
I want you guys to look at what's going on here. I, I don't know these people though. I'm just I just opened the, one of the results there to show you that you have many options. See, cosmetics, private label, blah 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 blah. It says what? Read the copy here. We guide you on branding, marketing, and product development. Let us take the production stress from you so you can focus on other aspects of your business. Okay? Let me scroll. Uh, why are the pictures not showing? But look at what they have. They have serums, toner, everything, vitamin. Look at everything. It's women that will know these things. You know what all these things mean. Okay, brightening toner, pH balancing, they do everything. Face oil, face scrub, face wash, they will do it for you. See, they will have hair oil, conditioner, shampoo. You want a product that's not on the list above, kindly send us an email. They will do anything for you. I don't know why the pictures are not loading. It is so cool when they do that. Anyway, formulation tips, formulation courses about us. Private label. Let me click again to see if the, the pictures would show. Because I think it tells a better story when the pictures show. It's not showing. Okay, that's fine. Let me come back to Google. Um, let me use Aurora Global Brands and see if they have something different there. Okay, so I'm going to share another tab and you're going to see this okay so look at this leading private label cosmetics um manufacturer okay leading private label manufacturer um, oh i don't want this card leave me i'm teaching people on 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 sm first all right so simply advanced laboratories well-established experience on cosmetics industry to serve worldwide Cosme See, they are bad spelling because they are not usually English people. They are usually Asians. But anyway, a professional beauty product supplier you can trust. Blah, blah, blah. You see? See all of them. Now, I want you guys to see what's on the pictures. I'm going to zoom in so you can see something. I need to close this. Now, watch this. See this lipstick and lip liner? What does it say here? It says what? Your beauty logo. Can you see? Your beauty logo, which means that you will put any logo that you like on it see eyeshadow one it says what your beauty logo all right you're allowed to put your logo there let's see see this one your design see this one you put your your beauty design put your logo there put your logo there you see everything here shop the popular samples see you can start your whole thing and put your logo on it. It is all yours. It is all yours. Who says you cannot start your beauty business? How will you get rich in Nigeria as a makeup artist? It's very difficult. Most makeup artists in Nigeria are poor. This is how you get rich, ladies and gentlemen. And when you get rich like this, and people will ask you, how did you do it? You say, Nagodo. You protect your trade secrets. You tell them it's God. Uh -huh. So let's come back to Google. Um, let's, let me come back to Google. I want to just show you guys that this thing is, is something that has been going on for years. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not crazy. Now, we've been doing um, cosmetics. Let me do something else. Let me do... Um, um, what should I do now? Let me focus on hair products. Or hair growth oil. Because Nigerians like natural hair movement. Uh -huh. So see them, CHSA Cosmetics, private label hair growth oil, HSA Cosmetics. So let's see what these guys have. Because all these Nigerian ladies that want to grow long natural hair, you can see this one and you can sell it to them. Okay, let me open it. Oh, what's all these cookies? Accept. So it says, private label hair growth oil is a product. Please stop distracting me with all these things. Ah, God. All right. Private label hair growth oil is a product that must not be missed. Can you believe a single drop contains the way to stimulate hair growth and make new healthy air, hair flourish on your customers' heads? Okay. Let's see the, if there are any pictures. 
So the possibilities of a private label. There we go. See, this is the oil. So it comes without any branding. That's why it's called either white label or private label. It's, it's hair oil that works, but it will naturally come without any single branding so that you are the one that will give them the brand name and logo that you put here. Okay? There's a whole marketing copy that you can use. It's all up to you. See, see this nice hair oil? There's no branding. You are the one that will put the branding on it. Okay, there we go. Look at them. And if you look here, you see what helps against hair loss, dandruff, everything. Read, read it by yourself. Everything is here. The best oil for best result. Look at them. Okay, volume, argan and jasmine oils, every avocado oils, everything. Contact us. So there's nothing you will not see. Nothing. I can go into private label shoes, um, private every anything day, anything day. Let me just stop sharing, so we can continue this lesson. Ah, it's like my camera went off. Oh. My camera went off. Um. Okay. Um. Just give me a second. Let me refresh my. Let me refresh my my browser and the camera will come back on. Just, just give me a minute. Be... Yeah, okay. So he'll be back just with a bit. This is massive, yeah? So guys, please, can you drop a message if you're learning something on the chat box as John comes back to us? Like this, this is really very crazy. A lot of things to learn this night. First of all, his analogy, you know, now he's leading us through white labeling. Okay, please, now we'll get John back on board. John, I'm adding you again. Okay. Welcome okay, back, thank sir. Thank you. Thank you. They don't come out to me. Oh. Okay, I'm back. All right. Is everyone learning something today? They try to get me off, but I'm back. All right. This is um <laughs> get you, I'm just seeing your comments. You see now, now God I beg. Okay. So the the moral of the of, of that whole um example was just to let you know that um you can it's a it's a hack. Just say private label anything you can become a, a seller of that thing in your name this is not the same thing as being a distributor because nigerians have that distributorship model whether it's a known brand in the us or wherever that they are distributing for no this one is that you are the brand you can call it whatever you want and you can even create that brand and have distributors as far as the eye can see but this is how money is made how can you how can you say you are a Nigerian? Do you know what it is to be a Nigerian? I think maybe we've suffered too much the consequences of being Nigerian that even the advantages that we, we don't even see it also. Yes, there are disadvantages of being Nigerian. But the advantage is that you were born into the largest market in Africa that people are trying to enter. And you were born into it. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Huh? Say to yourself, in 2024, it is my mandate to make money. Say it to yourself, if you are going to, if you are going to do um, positive confessions, let that be your confession. That in 2024, it is my mandate to make this money. On this mandate, I shall stand. <laughs> On your mandate, you shall stand. On this mandate, I shall stand. Bless Everest said, white label in feed day for shoe. Yes, of course. I've just given you the blueprint. If you are wondering if there's white label for anything, just go to Google and search private label that thing. No the fear. Do it. When you see the results, come back and, and pay, pay me your tithe. I collect tithe and offering without shame. Private label shoes. Private label 
sneakers. Private label high heel shoes. Private label designer shoes. Anything you are looking for in this life, just put private label in front of it and the search results will blow your mind. This is my Christmas gift to you for this year. Okay. Um, so that is it. Why did I even talk about this? Yeah, I was talking about the product side of things, okay? So um, the reason I went through all of this is that, remember, I started out with the question that why is it that at a time when the Nigerian is running away, they are coming here? I want us to see in ourselves what they see in us. Why are they cruise like this? Which one be white label for US visa? <laughs> make on that, make on that calm down. Someone say white label for food. Abba. <laughs> that one feed the shower. Let me know if it be, be too quick to put a cork in it. Yeah. Anyway, um, I want you to see in us what they see in us because you have the home advantage. All right. You have the home advantage. You were born here. There's a way you can communicate a product to a fellow Nigerian that an outsider would find very difficult to. Very difficult to. So um, take advantage of that. So that's that um, for those who are so inclined with physical products. But not everybody would want to do physical products, right? There are some people here who, okay, they're not really into physical products. They are into something else. Okay, they're like, okay, so what do I do? How do I figure out the money side of things? So let me go to a low-hanging fruit that most, a good number of people here um, are into. Um, a lot of people here are into the digital aspect of things, especially, especially those of us with, um, in, that are affiliated or associated with uh, the SM First brand. Most people on the SM First brand are digital marketers, um, freelancers, and, and whatnot. Now, you have to ask yourself, right? Without sentiment, where else are Nigerians spending money? Where else are Nigerians? Don't be too emotional about your pro product and try to force what you have on the market. Just figure out where they are spending money and convince you, I rather convince them to spend some of that money with you because you can provide a superior experience in that niche or in that industry that nobody else can. All right? So when it comes to, there are some of you who sell courses, you need to, to understand what it takes to collect money from somebody in exchange for knowledge. If you're in the knowledge business, you have to learn what it takes to collect money, to sell somebody on the idea that they are better off spending money on you for knowledge. And there are steps in that process. Now, I'll give you an example. Some of you sell something and you put out there on Facebook, I'm doing a masterclass. Da, 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 da. You will learn this, 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 this. And you put your price there, 25,000 naira. Listen, the number one problem Nigerians have with knowledge, don't you ever deceive yourself and say Nigerians don't pay for knowledge. Don't ever say that again. Nigerians pay for knowledge. I'm telling you. All right? It's my industry. I make blood money from it. Nigerians pay for knowledge. But you have to understand what it takes to sell Nigerians on the idea that they are better off paying you for that knowledge than somebody else. And what are those things? The number one thing is trust. Why is it trust? Because knowledge is not a physical thing. It's not a thing that they can see. Knowledge is not like something that everybody can objectively experience. For example, I'd rather buy an iPhone because everybody knows that buying an iPhone is a predictable experience. If I take 500,000 naira now and buy myself a new iPhone, anyone that costs 500,000 naira, I know what it, the experience will feel like. I will get it as a predictable experience. But knowledge, say I will buy your course. If I exchange money 
for this thing that doesn't have physical form? What is my guarantee that I will get a pleasant experience or a profitable experience? Trust issues, therefore. The reason some of you are not selling, whether it's courses or any of those things, is that people do not trust you to provide that experience. Not that they don't have money. They don't trust you to provide that experience. So how do you sell them on the idea that you can be trusted to provide that experience? You know how? The how is exactly the how is exactly what I am doing right now, right here. Am I selling right now? Answer the question in the comments. Am I selling on something? Am I selling? And if I'm if you think I'm selling, tell me um, how well I am selling if you think I'm selling. Am I selling right now? Answer the question. This is a thinking exercise, and I want you guys to key into it so you can put yourself yourselves in my shoes. Miracle says, yes, you are. Um, Royalty says, no. Okay, some people said no. Some people said yes. Um, Emeka said, yes, you are. If I said, yes, you are. Tulu Lokbe says, I am sold. All right? Ndubi Shekbara says, yes. Okay? Moses said, yes. Favor said, yes, sir. You are selling so well. DMTV says, you are good. Odogu says, you are selling this knowledge well. Emeka says, bro, you are selling perspective. Uh, Covenant says, yes, you are selling yourself. Boluatifer says, yes, you are selling. I'm happy that you see it this way. I'm happy you are seeing it this way because it tells me that you are learning something. Joy says you are selling credibility. Fantastic. Standard TV Abuja says um, you are subtly selling. Yes. Caesar says you are selling. Gideon says you are selling so well. Very good. C uh, Caesar says you are selling ideas. Miracle says you are selling because you have our time and attention. Mr. Insight says you are selling superiority in this industry. <laughs> World Sunny Hub says you are probably bought all of us. Very good. Yeah, if I end this class here today, I will go to bed happy and fulfilled. Because the greatest joy that I get is that when I have an idea in my head, I want to, to be able to communicate it to those that are watching me and listening to me. I want to be able to communicate it so clearly that they can re-explain it back to me. And I say yes. So fantastic. I love it. So I have not asked you for your money. Yet, you are saying that I am selling. It means that now you understand what selling means. Because right now, I am selling you. And, of, and I'm not going to ask you for your money at, 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 the, at the end of this thing. Oh, this is not a webinar where at the end. This is a, just a value program by SM First, Okay. But you understand that even though money is not being exchanged, I am selling. And in exchange for what I'm giving you, I am getting certain things that are not physical. I am getting your belief in my teaching abilities. I am getting your trust. Okay? Some of you are saying other things too. Read the comments and that will help you learn some more. Someone says, you are a great communicator. Good. I have sold you on the idea that I am a great communicator. Now, riddle me this, guys. Riddle me this. If I were to sell you, not on this program, maybe tomorrow, somewhere, you just, after watching me, you just went on Facebook or on Instagram and you saw an ad by John Obidi saying how to sell without selling, my course on how to sell without selling or invisible selling or how I made 10 million naira in one webinar or how I made 50 million naira in my physical event. Are you going to ask me any questions before you pay for that event or before you pay for that course? Very unlikely. Very unlikely. Even when I'm pitching, you put, so, sometimes people will be like, see, is, we have heard enough. How much you want to pay? Why? Because the selling is not just what you do when you are exchanging money. It's everything you do every day of your life that you exist as a salesperson. So right now, even though money is not being exchanged, by teaching you, by imparting knowledge, by giving you all these resources for free, it is all selling. You are already sold. Waiting for me to pitch the product, which I will not pitch. <laughs> but you are already sold, okay? So how can you use this principle? 
if you are good at something, one way to build trust is to find a way to allow people experience you for free. Find a way to make, and not just people in a few numbers, in large numbers. Find a way to get large numbers of people to experience your knowledge for free. And that experience is what we call a webinar. Okay? That experience is what we call a webinar. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, one of the skills for conquering the... Listen, nobody will teach you this thing except John Obidio. Gente. All those people that are collecting your money, they will tell you it is easy. It is not easy to make this bastard money on the internet. It is simple. but It's not easy. It is work. You can't just oh, open your WhatsApp as long as you have your internet connection and a phone. You can make money. You will be poor. They are high-level skills. One of those skills, I'm, I'm emphasizing it because the laziness in you will fight what I'm about to say. One of the important skills that you must learn if you want to make bastard money from this economy is webinars. Because nothing sells people on the idea that they are better off spending money with you than you inviting them to a free workshop. When you have their attention, you can now deliver that workshop so expertly that at the end, they are like, take my money. Now, how many of you have ever watched me on a webinar where I sold something at the end and it was so irresistible, you had to buy? How many of you here? Tell me. Tell me, how many of you here? So you now wonder, now where did they see this money? You have to learn specific skills, all right? In this new economy, if you are selling a course, you are selling a program, you cannot escape it. You must learn how to do webinars. Say, Chido Prince says me, Tech Trends, see, see my customers are here. See, Aketi has bought, um, Chido Prince has bought, Tech Trend has bought, who else? Nofisat. See my customers here. Your bots. Yeah. Get <laughs> said, I've bought your products over and over. All right. And that's because nothing sells the Nigerian public. Not just Nigerians, people around the world. But what works there also works here. Right. People says, even before you said you wanted to sell, people wanted to buy. I remember. Of course. All right. Cesar says, me. You see? I mean, I'm Caesar. I mean, yeah. So nothing sells Nigerians on the idea of your credibility and your authenticity and your value more than webinars. And it's usually free. So when you bring them to that platform where they can experience you for free, they're like, oh, ah, so this guy gets sense like this. I don't know. I think then I just find boy and pink clips they do for Instagram. Wow. You really get sense. So see wisdom. Ah, please, let me pay for myself and my wife. Let me pay for my cousin. For my neighbor, let me buy. Let me right, right. But creating that workshop and that webinar is a skill. I didn't just go and start teaching it to. I when when I first started in 2016 and 17, I had to rehearse my webinars because there is a way to structure your webinar presentation in such a way that at the end people are sold that if I don't buy what this guy is selling, it no go better for me. It's a skill. Webinar presentations is a skill, right? The person I learned from, I'm open, I'm very open with people I learned from. I learned from Russell Bronson. Some of you know Russell Bronson, right? Russell Bronson was teaching something about webinars a long time ago back then. And I was watching the guy like, ah, uh -uh, how is this guy so good that even before he pitches the product, I'm already feeling fire in my bones. I want to buy this thing. And I learned his way of doing webinars, but I didn't just stop there. I also thought about, wait, this thing, this, this way man is doing, how can I revise his formula and adapt it to the Nigerian market? Because you can't come to the Nigerian market and be speaking all your phone, 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 right? They have, they, there has to be ways you can readapt it to the Nigerian context and make it 10 times more effective. And that's what I did, all right? And that's why some of you, if you've ever 
been on my webinars, you will notice that even though I, can, I am professional on my webinars, I speak my perfect English, but where I need to be dramatic, you see me go and be very dramatic. I will speak Igbo or Yoruba or even Pidgin. I make some jokes. People will be laughing. You go laugh, laugh, laugh. You don't go nowhere. You go throw your, you go th th throw away your wallet. You will laugh. <laughs> <laughs> swipe my card. <laughs> swipe. Oh, this guy is so funny. <laughs> Where's my card? Swipe. I want to buy. <laughs> right? Anyhow you buy, as long as you buy, it's okay. <laughs> okay? Right. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, um, um, so, I had to learn that and I readapted his web, Russell Bronson's Oyibo style of webinars to the Nigerian market. And I over time, because I've, I've done this for almost uh, 10 years now. So, but I did the first one. It was okay. I sold about 20. I had about 20 sales. Okay, not bad. So I went back to my, my webinar thing. I retweaked it. Retweaked it. At, at that time, I, I had to do webinar for two hours. And I went back to learn that the optimal time for webinars is um, 30 minutes. But at most, worst come to the worst, 45 minutes. I said, ah, I mean, I like talking plenty. How do I not cut it down? So I now had to discipline myself. And I went back to the slides, reduced it to like 45 minutes. People will not get tired and drop off. And I started perfecting my delivery to fall within that 20, uh, to fall within that 45 minute um, time time limit. Also, what about the part where after you finish teaching, how do you now present the product? Many people get shy when it comes to that part, right? Many people get shy when it comes to the part of okay, you finish teaching now. Um, how do I now present the product? Many, many people get shy, but there's a formula for structuring everything from start to finish, from how you introduce yourself, uh, then how you start introducing the problem you are solving, then you start teaching, and then how you now present. There's a formula for even presenting the product, presenting what's inside the product, and then the pricing, and then the, the link to buy, and then the deadlines, and then the fast action bonuses, and then the delivery there's one thing I used to do when I first started. Um, when, I, when I first learned this thing about webinars, it was so intoxicating that I used to set targets for myself privately. Um, I used to say that before um, I must make 1 million Naira in 24 hours. That was my target back when I first started in 2016. Um, I, mean, I said 2016 because 2016 is when I did my first webinar. Um, that's like seven years ago now, right? I said, it was, my formula was so perfect. I set target that I must make one million naira in 24 hours. All right. I mean, during throughout the whole campaign, I'll make a lot of money, but I just it, I just it just felt good to make one million naira in 24 hours. I wanted to see if I could do it, you know. And my webinar framework was so perfect that I was always hitting it. But that was a long time ago. And in, in time, I began to do it. It became two million naira in 24 hours, five million naira, ten million naira. I was like, oh, okay, how big can we do this? I mean, it doesn't have to be 24 hours. It, I mean, the launch. Is usually over the period of one week, but I just wanted to put shrink that into 24 hours and just see, right? So, um, webinars work, okay? So, if you are someone who wants to make bastard money and you are into selling of courses, I'm specific now to those who sell courses and you sell knowledge, the way to wealth, the skill you must get good at is webinars, presenting webinars, okay? And then when you talk about webinars now, there's also the technology associated with webinars. So where are you going to host the webinars? Are you going to be doing it on YouTube like this? Or would it be hosted on Zoom? Or would it be hosted on Google Meets? All right, whatever platform you choose for that webinar presentation, you must get good at it, get competent at it. One thing I don't like about many of our people in Nigeria is that they always say, ah, eh, but that in, is it free, is it? There are some of these tools that if you don't pay for it, you, they will not even allow you to, to even use it. They don't have free versions. They don't have trial versions. And even the trial versions, if you use them for something that is professional, people will not take it seriously. If you look at this SM First broadcast we are doing now, you can see that usually we use a tool called StreamYard. But some of you will be doing broadcasts I see sometimes, and I'll see StreamYard logo. It means you are using the free version. People don't take it seriously when you do those things. Yeah? So you can see SM First here, there's SM First logo here, somewhere up here. There's your ability down there, but there's no StreamYard logo. There's more prestige that it brings to it. Okay, so figure out what platform you're going to be using and make sure you get good at it. 
know how to change the screens, put the names, you know, share your screen and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, that's one. Two. Another thing that you must learn. Okay, before I ask, before I say that, well, let me ask a question. How many of you paid to attend my physical event I did the, uh, about a week ago? Um, it was called um, what? What's the name of my event? What was my event called again? Designing the decade. <laughs> That's what it was called. <laughs> How many of you paid to attend um, Design the Decade? How many of you paid to attend Design the Decade? Tell me. Okay, Akira Shibola, so good to see you here. Yes, Ebu Bay, you guys paid. Okay, now, um, ah, Samuel Oluwede attended. I saw you there in person. Good to see you. Ebu Bay, good to see you. Awesome. All right, now, for those of you who bought or did not buy, when you got to the sales page for that event, so Godfrey, yes, I remember you, Godfrey, yeah? Uh, for those of you that paid, when you got to the sales page for that event, what's the first thing you saw on the page, right? You saw a video, all right? You saw a video, a sales video. You clicked and you listened, yeah? You watched the video, and on that video, I was I had um, five minutes. A bit was it five or ten minutes? I think it's ten minutes. On that video, I had ten minutes to sell you on the idea that this event was something you could not afford to miss. All right, how many of you paid for that event just because of that video that was on the page? And everybody else who was not there, I want you guys to watch. This is a sales masterclass. I'm teaching you what it takes to collect money from Nigerians. Because people say there's no money in Nigeria, and that is a bloody lie. There is money in Nigeria, but you are ill-equipped. You are ill-trained. You don't have the training to collect money from Nigerians, like the white man has. Or like I have, <laughs> right? So how many of you guys who paid to attend... Paid because you saw that video and something in the video convinced you to buy. Tell me in the comments. Yeah? This is what it takes. Tell me. How many of you were convinced because of the video? See, Oyeri Kachi Godwin says the sales video got me. All right? And I'm sure other people are going to put up, but I know we are, we are, we are, we are pressed for time, so let me round off really quickly. All right. The point of what I'm saying, the point of what I'm saying is that apart from a webinar, everyone must also get good at creating a sales video, not sales copy. You people like to do things the easy way. You want the easy way out. You write copy on the page. You will not sell anywhere as good as somebody who can sit down confidently on camera and explain their value to the audience in a particular way that convinces them that, you know what, I'm sold, I'm coming. And for those of you that came, the hall was filled to capacity for an event that did not have flyer. That event, I didn't post on Facebook that I was doing an event. I didn't post on Instagram. The only thing I posted on Instagram and on Facebook were the pictures from the event that had happened. Why? Because we were sold out. Those of you that came, there was no space anywhere. Everywhere was full. People were standing. I had to email people that paid to come that please, there's no space again. Watch the live stream. They see no greed, they came. But some on the live stream. Right? Those see people that were there live, ask them. Okay? How much did you pay to go to, to come to that event? Those, these, people, these people here, they paid 70k to attend the, the event. 70k. It's not, not, it's not a, an event for 20k or 25k or 30, 40, right? I put the price at 70k. This was a hall of um, 100 capacity. I told the hall manager to please add more chairs and increase it to 150. He still extended it to 160 and it was still full. They paid 70k each. See them in the comments here. I, I can't make it up. They are watching. They all paid 70k each. And of course, they got amazing value. But you see, I had to first of all convince them that they would get amazing value. 
and there was a sequence to convince it. Okay, I told you that the number one thing with the Nigerian audience is trust. The number one, if you can, if you can solve the problem of trust, you have won half the battle. After the problem of trust, once you can now sell them on your competence and your credibility, that's okay. It's, let me, I say Nigerians spend money on knowledge. The problem is they don't trust you. Look at my customers here. It's not me telling you. They're, it's live. See them. They paid 70K to attend. And, and those people that attend, they'll tell you, yes, they got value. But they'll also tell you that the hall was filled with capacity, full of people that paid 70K. You say there's no money? Capacity was 110. I begged the hall manager to make it 150 so that people would not be standing. So they had to pack chairs. There was nowhere to turn left or right. They packed chairs, moved all the tables. So 150 people were inside that hall. Everybody paid 70K each. Those that could not enter the hall, they paid for live streaming access. And I did not bring down the price because it's live streaming. People that pay for live streaming access pay the same 70K. Some of them are watching this broadcast. And if you ask them, they got mad value. But before I had the opportunity to give them that value in exchange for money, I had to use a video to sell them on the idea that, listen, this 70K I'm collecting from you, you are going to have the best experience of your life. In that video, there are things I could not have been able to communicate to them by typing it there. I had to show up on video and say it and present it in a certain way. And on the video, I was showing certain pictures and certain pictures, facts, figures. After they were convinced to say, ah, this guy is him I want to spend this money on. Okay? Bolu first said, someone I met there paid for what I sold for 60K. Ah, Bolu first, so you came to my event to sell your own market. Ah, where, where's my tights? Bolu Atifer, bring your tights. I will not agree. Anything you sell in my event, you must give me, you must give me 10% tights. I'm joking, of course, but that, that, that's a very good experience. Okay, but I think what Bolu Atifer is saying is that when he was able to come to my event, my, people at, at my events generally spend a lot of money on knowledge. So he's saying that he, somebody that he met at my event paid for something he sold for 60K. So that's, to tell, so that's to tell those of you that say people don't pay for knowledge, that that is a lie. It's not true. Come to my events, come to my events that I price at that level. You see people that, that spend 70K, not, I, I know people that, that come to my events, they spend millions for knowledge. Is just trust. Do we trust this guy? Okay. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, please. My time is fast spent. This is not night nice school. This is what I teach for hours and hours and hours and hours and at, on, and 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 uh, hours on end. Okay. Um, <laughs> someone said you don't rush press calculator. Why? See, this, somebody cannot tell you something in private again. When I go, they call the count person money. Why? Why do they count my money? Bless Everest. Eh? I know some of you yourself also did it, but you not put it out in the comments. Anyway. The point here is that I can't give you a whole masterclass now. There's just so much. Um, there's just so much to say and uh, so much to teach. And I know that um, Caroline is going to come and do an amazing job again tomorrow. Caroline Wabara was even at my event as well. Um, yeah, amazing lady. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to just tell you on is that listen, there's money in this country. <laughs> see, see there, but don't go say calculator. Yeah, there's money in this country. Okay, but you need to be very logical and unsentimental. Ask yourself, where is the money being spent? There's money being spent in so many sectors. You don't need all of the money. Just pick one. And learn what it takes to sell them on the idea that you're the best person to spend money on. Now, I don't do cosmetics, even though I showed you guys all those things. I don't do all those white label. I just showed you guys all those things. The one that I do is knowledge. So if you're asking me, how do we make bastard money in the knowledge business? Come on, talk to me. I'm the guy. I'm not saying I'm not saying literally come and talk to me. I don't have time like that, but I'm just saying that out of everything I'm saying, the one that I have majored on and pitched my tent on is how to make bastard money in the knowledge business. All right. I practice what I preach, I preach what I practice. And I'm telling you that there is bastard money in the knowledge business. But you cannot come to this business with a 1950s mentality, with a night market mentality of 
I'm selling course on how to make hair. Come and buy. Eh, eh. There is a system. There is a way to convince people that spend money on hair knowledge that you are the best person to. And you have to learn that system. A couple of things you must learn. Let me just list them out. I don't have time to teach them in detail now because there's no time. But let me list them out. I've already told you one. Webinars. Number two, sales videos. Okay? Number three, copywriting. But let me say AI-assisted copywriting. Okay? AI-assisted copywriting. I did a free AI copywriting class some time ago. I'll do another free one sometime soon. Um, just look out for the announcement wherever. Yeah? I'll do another free one sometime soon, but you must learn AI-assisted copywriting. What I mean by that is that to learn copywriting as a whole will take you a long time. But with AI, you don't really need to learn the whole of copywriting like that. There's a way you can put some prompts that would help you um, create fantastic copy without being a copywriter. I have cracked it, okay? So um, um, the first one I said was uh, webinars. Second one was sales videos. Third one is AI assisted copywriting. And the fourth one is ads. Listen to me. Every listen, I always say this thing that life is too short to grow organically. Life is too short. To, <laughs> life is too short to grow organically. Everybody must learn how to run ads. And Caroline is a baba when it comes to ads. We're gonna come here tomorrow. I'm sure she will talk about that tomorrow. All right. I even got Caroline to teach people that came to my event how to create ads. Because I know that she does, she is, Caroline is better than me when it comes to that. I say it very proudly and boldly. I'm proud of her work. I'm very happy to say it. Okay, so you are you are privileged to be having her to, uh, on the second day. I think that's tomorrow. So, but just know that so that it will sure. guide your questions that you'll be asking Caroline. You must learn how to create Facebook ads, Google ads, LinkedIn. There's a baba of all those things. She's going to talk about it tomorrow. All right. Then funnels. How many Nigerians know how to create a sales funnel from start to finish? Most Nigerians are lazy. Most Nigerians sell stuff on Instagram. You click buy in the link in my bio. You go and click the link in their bio, and it's a seller page that are selling something. No opt-in page to take your email address. No follow-up sequence. They're not pixeling the page, right? So you must understand how to create that start to finish. Um, um sales funnel and then finally you also must get good at actually creating offers note i did not say products i said offers a product is a part of an offer but a product is not an offer you need to get good at creating irresistible offers whereby two, two people are selling the same thing but somehow you are just incentivized to buy from this person over the other person because he knows how to present the offer. He knows how to package the offer. He knows how to add more value to that offer that make it irresistible. And with all these things, ladies and gentlemen, you will be a sales superstar. No matter what it is you are selling, whether it is religion, whether it is faith, whether it is um, digital marketing knowledge, whether it is physical products, whether it's affiliate marketing even, this will work. Whether you are selling services, this will work and you'll make bastard money in 2024. I don't just practice what I preach. I also pre preach what I practice. And this has been winning the digital economy of 2024. My name is John Abidi and I wish you a happy new year. Amazing. Oh my God. I don't know if anybody, if anybody is excited as I am, like uh, Mr. John Ovid actually shared with us a 70K masterclass. If you, if you have listened to him, I think you, you would have gotten a part of class he talked about. Please, can we come to the comment session and begin to say thank you to Daddy Joe for taking his time. You know, it started from the analogy. In that analogy was really out of this world. I was just, I don't know if I was laughing and learning at the same time. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the, the child cartoon nature, when you were doing that analogy, you know, that was really, yeah. really crazy. And yeah. last pass, it's the skills you need for this.
year we are going into. I think anybody, I think, I, you, what you said in the beginning, you said, if you can do just 10% of what you're about to teach. Yeah. And now I agree that only 10% of what you've thought today, if anybody here can put that to practice, they are going to be exceptional and make a lot of money. You, you, you kept talking about bastard money, you know? <laughs> bastard money. So... <laughs> If you can, if you, if you can be able to take just a portion of what um, John has shared this night and practice just a little of it, I'm very certain. He, he mentioned uh, learning, learning uh, AI uh, assisted copywriting. I think that is. Yes. I was sharing with before you came in uh, a course I'm taking on uh, prompt engineering. Currently, I, I just. I'm, I'm still working with uh, generating uh, AI images, cute images and all of that. I've been seeing them on your and Facebook. More and more and more. So if you are here... <laughs> 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 so if you are here and have listened to John, I think this is the time to go out there and begin to practice. The white labeling was a takeaway. Please, I don't know if you can drop on the comment section your key takeaway from this session. The one that blew your mind the most... Can you drop it? John wants to see the point that actually staggered your thoughts. Can you share that on the comment section? Say the one that actually caught you more than any other of these. Like every part of this session has been really amazing. Yeah. But I know that there is one you're going to go home with and you're going to work on almost immediately. Drop it on the comment section. Yeah. And again, tomorrow we are having... Caroline Wabara, when John says someone is better than him in a yes. particular thing, <laughs> you should know what the person can do. Caroline is, she's number one in digital marketing. I've seen, I've seen her, I've seen some of the tools she recommended. I went to AppSumo and bought some of those tools during the Black Friday uh, market. Yeah. So, mm. so I think tomorrow is going to be be even more is going to be really very crazy so i want you to be here again tomorrow we'll be sharing with um, um caroline okay so please if you learn something tonight drop it in the comment section we want to see what you learned from john today and uh, don't forget to share the good news of this message possibly do a summary of it and keep sharing the knowledge okay uh, I, I hope that from uh, by 2024, we'll have a lot of guys who are doing webinars because what John have done today is to open your eyes to a lot of possibilities. The, what you now do with what you have learned today is what to decide what to become or what to be able, able to earn um, in 2024. So guys, let it not just be, uh, how was it? Amazing. What did you learn? Mm -hmm. That guy was too much. You know, please make sure sure you are going to practice what you have learned me i'm already thinking of what i'm going to do white lab heading for <laughs> <laughs> nice one <laughs> <laughs> truly why you are saying white lab i say ah no be to carry sfs logo same for those who made them primitive they do one <laughs> <I'm Finish>. not <laughs> sure. that's gonna happen very soon <laughs> thank you john thank you so much thank you sir. thank you so much thank you let's sir. bring in thank some you, of the of the comments down here into the chat right so this guy said did i pull it up we have learned the importance of marketing sequencing that aid us in the sales conversion yeah then this person um, priska said she has learned about four currencies one yes. must have yes and the currencies one must have so summarized in acronym m-e-a-t money yes energy attention and time thank yes. you so much john for this thank session. you i think this has thank been a blessing you. and to everyone who attended the same first i think um i see that the value is more in this webinar even more than the day of event if you notice that day yeah. of event, john yeah. said <laughs> share this on stage how would he have shared all of this <laughs> on the SM first day? So, yeah. and uh, this uh, grow with SM first session will continue to happen. 
If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and ring the, and ring the bell so that when um, by tomorrow, 8 p.m., we'll be back here um, with um, Caroline. She will be sharing with us what you need to do. Now you have gotten the knowledge on what to do. Caroline will share you how you can do mass media marketing of whatever it is you're going to be um, you're going to be working on in the year 2024. John, please, thank you so much. I don't know if um, we have we do have time to take questions or let's take one or two questions. If you have questions, please drop it down there in the comment section so we can share with um, John and he can answer that and we'll go. But if there is no question, I think John will be asking you for uh, what you want to tell us before we go tonight. Okay. Okay, so while we're waiting for the questions, um, I think that's about mm -hmm. it, but um, this is the um, December 4. Um, usually I like to end the year with a, a strong um, um, live online event. It's usually free. I do night school sessions every Friday. Um, but we're going to be doing one event that has to do with uh, superior selling. Um, I don't know when it's going to happen yet, uh, but I will say that um, how do you connect with me? Go to my Instagram. Um, not follow me on Instagram. I don't really post much on Instagram. But if you go to the link in my bio on Instagram, you see the, the links to where you can reach me, my Telegram channels, my email lists, and all of that. Um, just subscribe to my Telegram. And once we have the next... Um, um live events on my youtube um you're going to be one of the first to know thank you so much thank and, you and so much. also Please. people don't believe this but i actually answer my dms on instagram don't stress me too much Shao, but answer my dms on instagram so <laughs> i don't bite people people don't believe this you answer your DMs on Instagram. John actually responded yes. to me on Instagram. I reached out to him for SM first. So he yeah. does <laughs> his DMs. So I'm a witness yeah. to that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Someone All asked right, a sir. question here. She said, I will look at this. Can one resell products from the white labeling? Yes, that is the reason for white labeling. It means, you see, so it's even a higher level of risk. It's not just reselling products is that they are creating it for you. So you are the one that will tell them which name you will put on it. You say, oh, put Mary Cynthia and Daughters Limited. Then they will print it for you, put your logo, and you can sell as your own. It is your, creating your whole business without manufacturing it. So yes, that's what Lloyd Label is about, reselling products that were created for you. It's not like affiliate marketing, where you are selling a product that belongs to somebody else, and the other, the, the other person has the branding and the other person takes a percentage. No, they are going to create for you. You are the owner of that brand. Like the way you have Mary Kay, you can create your own called Mary Cynthia and sell it in Nigeria. That's it. Thank you, sir. That was very simple and short. Okay, not, not, not this one. There is one that said, uh, is it this? About the white label, do they deliver the same pro, the same product formula for different brands? Uh, this is the last. So I'll be done. So they have so um, to look where well, okay, Mute. Um, so they have different um, ways of doing it. Sometimes they have the same formula. The thing is that if it's the same formula for different brands, the end user has no way of knowing. However, if you are concerned about the formulation. You can also instruct them on your preferred formulation. You can say, in this particular one that you are doing for me, add 10% more shea butter or add 10% more this or more that. So they can always tweak and mix around the formulation that you want. And let me tell you something, even though the one I just told you was for uh, skincare and cosmetics, there's also... <laughs> Some people are going to be smart. See, there's also white label perfume. <laughs> there's white label fragrances, right? So you can even say, the way this one smells, I want you to add a little bit of rose water smell. I want you to add a little bit more of lemon in this one. Add a little bit more of lavender in this one. Now, I said there's, there's white label perfume. There's also white label, you know, these essential oils. <laughs> Somebody will make bastard money in 2024. You know, these essential oils <laughs> that they sell and put inside 
I put inside diffuser to give uh, fragrance in the in the house. There's white label that yeah. you, you can say add more cinnamon. You can create your own formulation on paper and say do this one for me, and they will do it all in your name, all in your brand. Goffy says whether they will ship it to you. Yes, they will ship it to you here in Nigeria, your batch, and then you can sell as you as you wish. Goffy is also asking. Do they do delivery themselves when someone places an order? Okay, this guy, this Godfrey, you want to make bastard money. So let me just end with your own question because it seems very similar. Okay. Now, because you are in Nigeria, Godfrey, because you are in Nigeria selling to Nigerians, and these people are not in Nigeria, they're Asians or Americans, they, it's not practical to do that kind of wide labeling when you are in, when they are going to ship to your, it's, it's, it's going to take too much time. It's not going to make sense. So if you are selling to Nigerians, you have to order a batch. Then you will handle the sales yourself. However, the answer to your question is yes. If your customers are in the United States. Now, how many of you take supplements? I'm sure many of you do. There is something also called private label supplements. <laughs> this thing goes deep now there is a brand in america that i can I, I, I don't know i should give people this one this one is too deep there's a brand in america whereby you can start your own brand of supplements all these vitamin d all the, all the normal supplements people buy you know liver oil fish oil all this whatever all these supplements those you, you start your own now what happens is that they not only do private labeling, they also do delivery. So anybody that comes to your store to buy supplements from you based on your brand name and everything, that company would pack it, put your logo on it, and ship to your customer in America or Canada in your name. All you do is stay home and count your money. So I'm answering this Godfrey's question that the, the, the answer is yes if your market is in America, but no if your market is in Nigeria. So this thing goes really deep. So yes, that's how to answer your question. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Please, guys, I think with all of the value shared tonight, what else can we do but go to the comment section and tell John Obidi thank you for tonight sir me i did tell you that. <laughs> thank you thank you sir i don't see you can teach um our audience but i have actually turned to the student learning a whole lot tonight <laughs> thank you so much guys on me. that comment session i see somebody saying bastard money 2024 <laughs> <laughs> bastard money <yo. laughs> thank you so much John. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you so much. Thank Guys, you. keep saying thank you to John over there. Thank you so much, sir. This has been really amazing. I wish you can repeat this kind of session again. Uh, I don't know. Um, last time I prevailed. I don't know. I don't want to put this here now. So. <laughs> Any, anytime you call me, I will come. Anytime you call me. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> my course. God. Jesus, thank yeah. you so much. Thank My you pleasure. so much. It's been an amazing My time pleasure. with you, John. Thank you. My so pleasure. Much. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank, thank you, sir. You. So, guys, um, I'll let John go now because he has given us a lot already tonight. I'm simply saying that um, tomorrow we are having Caroline come on this session. Caroline is one person you want to listen to. She's amazing. She's got the extension of what John has shared today. So when you get the idea, when you get the sales funnel, how are you going to push it? She is the queen of digital marketing. She's the best in Africa. So I want you to be on this call tomorrow. So if you if you are not on our, if you didn't get our message today, please make sure you subscribe and, and click the notification um, and bell so that once we go live tomorrow by 8 p.m., please be on this call. 7.50, we open the channel. We're going to schedule it. You see it, you can be on the waiting and click the bell so that you will get notified once you go live so come on go subscribe and click notification so that you will be on the waiting for tomorrow 8 p.m caroline will come on with all of the marketing strategies the tools you'll be
be needing for your marketing, the, 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 the structure, the sequences, she has all of this and is working for her. So tomorrow by 8 p.m., don't miss it. And if you don't mind, share the message with your friends. Share the message with your friends. Please share the message with your friends. Um, please, no, I don't know really, if you're still on this call. Can you drop our channel um, link? Uh, our channel link is youtube.com um, slash C. YouTube.com slash C slash SM first. That is the channel link. I just dropped it on the chat. So come on, send it out to your friends. Let them subscribe. Let them be available for tomorrow's class. It's going to be amazing. And we're not just stopping at this first class. This is the first class after the SM first of 2023. Yeah. So we have some of our previous speakers who will be coming to be with us in our class. You know, um, SM First have hosted Sabinus, we've hosted Josh Tiffany, we've hosted Mr. Peter Obi, we've hosted uh, Gideon Ossie, we've hosted no, um, Choma Ifan Eze, Jim Ike, we've hosted uh, Nelly Ebog, that's Niger Branch, who just hosted her NBC Trade Fair in Abuja recently. We've hosted Antia, there are a lot of amazing guys who are doing great stuff who have hosted before, who we have the chance of listening to on this channel. Don't miss being a part of this come on tomorrow 8 p.m make sure you are here and hopefully if you're hooked up to our channel you will get replays of most of our event if you go to our channel you see all the videos of the sm fest event that i held in 2023 the keynote speeches the panel sessions and uh the fireside chats that happened in 2023 don't just leave the don't just leave this uh, um, link and go away. Go back to the channel and see all the videos for the past three years. We've uploaded all of them. A lot of lessons to learn from there. Thank you so much for being a part of this class. Thank you so much. Drop us a message and say good night to everyone. Thank you everyone for being a part of this class. Drop a message. Say good night to every member of this uh, session. Everyone who tuned into this session. Say good night to everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nobu, for being at the background. Thank you, Ihuoma, our project manager, for um, helping us put this together. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guys. Let's see you tomorrow, 8 p.m. Thank you. Nobu, please give us some message. As well. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, give us a music over there. Why we wait for people to go? Thank you. Keep dropping a message. Keep saying good night, everybody.